ね。Got it. Well, I can hear you, but how many times is that just this afternoon? Oh no. We can hear you. Yeah. And take two. <laughs> yeah, we're all here to online. This time for sure. The best part is us responding to him this whole yeah. time while no one else yeah. can hear him. <laughs> So I joked before about interpretive dance. I guess that happened. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, in fact, <laughs> I guess I should read you that entire <laughs> intro. <laughs> Yay! Congratulations, me. Uh, welcome to the Lawrence <laughs> second actual game on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> Um, yes, we are tonight. We're going to play some Call of Cthulhu. We're playing uh, William Bailey's Haunted Mansion. Uh, I am. It was much funny the first time around. Very excited about not running the game. Uh, we have Shannon Nichols here. He's going to run the game for us. Uh, one of the writers of this historical adventure set right here. Spoilers and a, just a wee little bit of self doxing uh, in Ballarat. So. What we're going to do real quick, uh, let's bring this screen up so I can see where everyone is, uh, is just go around. We're going to have everyone introduce themselves, uh, them actual selves, uh, and then, wait a minute, this is going to go terribly wrong. Where everyone is, uh, is because it hasn't around. already. Everyone introduce themselves. You invited uh, us. Them it has gone horribly wrong. Uh, and then, <laughs> no, that's me and my really wacky audio setup. No, that's fine. Uh, no, I'm going to have everyone introduce themselves and uh, just tell us uh, who you'll be playing for this adventure, please. Uh, and we'll start, please, with Nephthys Nile. That's me. Hi, I am Nephthys Nile. You will find me around the traps uh, on my name. Uh, my pronouns are she, they, and tonight I will be playing Clara Baldwin, uh, performer, scam dispeller, educator of the uncleansed masses and some of the cleansed ones too. Brilliant. Uh, Sean Sunday, would you do us the honours, please? Yes, hello. I am Sean Sunday, and I am your friendly local uh, neighborhood community manager for Arkham Forge, your new favorite map making program. And I am playing ye old timey Australian Vankman, James Curtis. Magnificent. Uh, hey, speaking of Arkham Forge, I do believe uh, you've come into the session with uh, a little something something up your sleeve. Yes, yes, indeedy. Uh, we have a couple of Arkham Forge codes that we can give away to some of the cool, cool people in the chat tonight. Awesome. So if you type into chat exclamation mark enter, and I'm pretty sure this is on our little rolling thingy up there, which is great. I can see it. Uh, then you'll go into the draw. Done. Um, I think we'll do two of these. We'll uh, pull one winner after the midstreamish ish break, uh, and then we'll do another one at the end. So it's... Who doesn't love a map making tour, right? Um, map making is a fun pastime. Enjoy it. Uh, Talera79 uh who looks absolutely amazing with that hat high quality um who the heck are you um so i am talera 79 uh you can find me pretty much not on my own channel because i don't really stream at all unless i'm dying repeatedly on lego um but you can see me pop up on other people's streams doing things like this um, and tonight I am playing Dr. Bella Guerin, um, and uh, she is the first female fully educated doctor in Australia. And she is not going to let people forget that women can do that too. <laughs> Brilliant. 
Woo! Um, I, uh, little old me, just just a guy. I'm Promethean. There's a zero in it. I'm here. Ta-da! I, um, I guess I'm like the chief executive law right, maybe. Uh, but tonight I will be uh, taking on the role of Detective Thomas Montague, uh, a seasoned police detective with a reputation for pioneering new scientific methods of investigation. He will be having none of your mystical woo shit thank you very much uh and of course last and god knows not least because they're running the session uh we have shannon our uh keeper for the evening so shannon please introduce yourself Hello. tell us what you do uh Hello everybody, my name is Shannon Nichols, I'm one of the co-writers of this adventure and I am the law keeper for this evening. Uh, I'm not much of a regular streamer so you can't really find me anywhere, but you can find my work uh, with the Tales from Rat City podcast, which is the team that uh, put this piece together. Um, and if you want more and you like this, this module is actually, it'll show up, on this module is for sale on the Miskatonic repository website. Um, the Tales from Rat City team, David Waldron, who, who co-wrote this with me, um, he's just published another module called The Last Dance of Lola Montez, which is a modern Ballarat adventure, still touched in with the history. And for uh, Ballarat Heritage Festival coming up in a couple of months, we have a part two to this adventure with the same characters, different player party, same characters continuing the adventure you'll be seeing uh, today. That's, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, highly recommend you check out Tales from Rat City. I hear the guy that they get to do the journalist voice is just oh, hot sexy as voice. fuck. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, cool. So, Shannon, would you like to uh, get us started, I guess? Let's roll. Outstanding. So uh, the setting is 1890 in Ballarat, uh, uh, country Victoria, regional Victoria. Uh, it's it's a very gothic city for, for anybody not too familiar with Ballarat. It was... Uh, really became a big city after the gold rush in the 1850s. Uh, at one point around the 1860s, Ballarat had a larger economy than London. We had so much money coming through this city. And you can see that in the uh, in the Gothic architecture of the, the beautiful heritage buildings. You can still see in the town today, uh, but of course, it's not history in the 1890s, which is the setting for this evening. It is, um, it is reality, it's the life we're in. Uh, your four characters who, who we have introduced uh, already, the four characters have all been requested to attend Mr. William Bailey at his imposing Gothic mansion on Drummond Street in town. The house towers over the surrounding buildings, its windows are shuttered and ivy grows on its walls. For such a new and opulent house, it is showing odd signs of neglect. Uh, there is an image of uh, Mr. Bailey's mansion as well visible. If, if uh, Promethean can pop that up for the audience, you could be more specific than that. Which is the ha which hand? Which hand? Out six. Thanks. Hand out yeah, six. Love hand that. out six. Brilliant. Thank you. Very good point. Uh, and there's also uh, map one, which is a map of the mansion that you might want to show them as well. The mansion. Um, da -da 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 one way or another, you have all found yourselves welcomed into the parlor of the sumptuously decorated Bailey Mansion at precisely eight p.m. Rather oddly, you were welcomed not by a staff member, but by a distracted and personable woman who introduces herself as Mrs. Emily Bailey. She hurried you each into the parlor, invited you to take a seat, and then promptly disappeared, assuring you that her husband would be with you shortly. As you make yourselves comfortable in the parlor of the Bailey Mansion, you can't help but notice the odd atmosphere in the house. The air is thick with tension and a faint smell of, perhaps, incense. The silence is only broken by the occasional creaking of the old wooden floorboards. The room itself is spacious and grand, with high ceilings and ornate mouldings. The walls are adorned with paintings and sculptures, some of which look quite valuable. The bookshelves that line the walls are filled with volumes on history, philosophy and natural science, indicating that William Bailey is a man of learning and intellectual curiosity, or at least that he would like to be seen as such. Before we continue, I need us all to roll for your luck statistic that you will have throughout the rest of this evening. Uh, now, for anybody watching, luck as a statistic works like any other. Uh, in the Call of Cthulhu system, you throw a, a D100, so two 10-sided dice, uh, and you want to roll underneath what your stat statistic is. So low rolls is good in this circumstance. In order to create your luck stat, what you need to do is roll 3D6, so that's your Monopoly die with six sides, 3D6, and then you total that up, 
and then you times your total by five. So if you roll three ones, which would be very unfortunate indeed, then your luck statistic is 15 out of a possible, um, well, out of the absolute highest 100 of any of the stats. Uh, that's way too much maths for me already, but sure. <laughs> <Let's do it. laughs> okay. okay. And let so us know I, how you are. I got a six, a six, and a two. Not um, bad. Which brings my luck to 70. That's very good. I ended up with a 65. Not bad at all. I'm running a bit low. I'm on 50. 50? Okay, you can work with that. And as Promethean does his maths, um, I will explain luck has two <laughs> purposes. I got that smart brain, I'm good. No, go for it. Luck has two uses in this game. The first use is if you fail a roll, you can spend luck to, in to, to decrease the number of rolls. So if you needed to roll under a 20, but you rolled a 25, you could spend five points of luck to reach the 20 and make it a success. You can actually also use luck to turn a regular success into a hard success. So um, half what you need to get, for example, so less than a 10. Um, the other use for luck is a luck roll. So if I don't know, say if you say, oh, is there a crowbar within reach that I can use to Jimmy open this door? I would say, oh, well, you're in a garage, make a luck roll. And if you are lucky, you find the crowbar. If not, then you don't find the crowbar. Uh, and indeed, in combat, enemies will tend to attack the investigator with the lowest luck statistic. Uh, I indeed eventually came up with 70 for my luck. 70, not bad. Lovely, so remember those numbers or write them down is even better. As you wait for Bailey's arrival, I would like you all to make a spot hidden roll to see what you can perceive about the room. Let me know if you make a regular success or a hard success. So a hard success would be uh, half your stats. So if you have a spot hidden, as I'm looking at Balak Warren's sheet, um, if you have a spot hidden of 50, if you roll 45, that's a success. If you roll less than 25, that's a hard success. And if you roll less than 10, that is an extreme success. Bollocks. <laughs> yep, bollocks. Yep. <laughs> 62. Mm, no good. 24. That sounds like a success for it you. does, doesn't it? Is that a success or a hard success? Uh, so run me through hard success again. So again, like okay. I don't know what I'm talking so about. So you need to remember. What did you roll, 25? Uh, let's say 24. 24, so that is a hard success for you. You have a spot hidden of 65. Yeah, yeah. So rolling less than 65, you see it. Rolling half of that, so rounded to 32, you get to see extra information. Yeah, gotcha. So, it's below. so yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So for the other three of you, as you enter this space, all you see is what I described. You notice a faint smell of incense. There's some very lovely books on the shelves, very uh, fancy philosophical tomes, really nice artwork. And that's all you really notice. Um, Detective Thomas Montague, as a seasoned police investigator who has come over from England to teach the Ballarat police how it is done the shit. Uh, with the modern policing, uh, you, you notice quite a lot more detail than your colleagues do. You notice some concerning clues in the mansion's parlour. The interior, although lavish, is unkempt and it appears to have been neglected as though the housekeeping staff have been unable to complete their regular duties. There are several empty glasses containing the remnants of wine and spirits that have not been cleared away. There is a well-used tobacco pipe lying unceremoniously on the table uh, by an overflowing ashtray. You also notice there are open books lying around on, uh, on the bookshelves on spiritualism, folklore, and psychological ailments such as hallucinations and anxiety disorders. With your hard success, you also notice there is sign of pacing with scuffs on the floor and carpet. There are two revolver rounds that can be found just under the, the, the lip of the chaise lounge. Uh, so two spent revolver rounds, suggesting that a weapon was loaded in a... Sorry, not spent, two, two full revolver rounds, um, suggesting that a weapon was loaded in a hurry or in an agitated state, and the bearer neglected to notice the loss uh, of those two rounds. Mm. Uh, um, okay, I think Thomas saw. Yes. So and so we're all waiting in. And what was the room that it was so, that we were in? So right now you are in the front parlor uh, of the mansion. You've all been left, just the four of you alone. You've been left in the parlor to wait for Mister Bailey to attend you. So you will have some time to interact with each other and, and have a conversation. Yeah. Here. Uh, I think Thomas might say something along the lines of, "Well, one would think that if we're being invited to such a grand place, that they could have tidied up a little more." And uh, Detective Montague will uh, claim those two revolver rounds. Keep a note of them. I will. Um, 
Lovely. Uh, any other conversation to be had before I roll on? Uh, Clara will be assessing her compadres, um, trying to ascertain social standing um, so that she can uh, figure out how to converse with these people cool. before she opens her mouth. Um, make a psychology roll for me, please, and let me know how you go. Okay. So I will note, none of you will have met each other before this evening. Uh, so with a 22, that mm -hmm. is a hard success. Excellent. So I will give you, uh, I won't give you too much player character information, of course, as a role-playing game. We'll get there naturally. But I will say that from a hard success of a psychology role, you can tell that Thomas Montague is all business. Uh, and he's quite a serious man, um, at, at least uh, at least at the moment. Um, you, can, you can gather that. And you, you would gather that he's probably a sceptic, uh, much like yourself. Dr. Balaguerin, you would probably find also, uh, is more likely to be sceptical. But she, uh, and much like yourself, in fact, perhaps even in the kindred spirit matter, is, is not the sort of woman that, that many people would, would want or expect women in this time to be, which is meek and doing what they're told. She, much like you, is quite happy to strike out on her own. And um, and there's that collegiality you can sense there. James Curtis seems like a friendly enough fellow, but he is very clearly looking around here as though he is already convinced that there is genuinely something spiritual happening. <laughs> Oh dear! You can you can garner that from his the way he's looking around the room and the way he carries himself. You can already tell that. Oh bless his cotton socks! Uh, anybody else? Uh, I'm just yeah. I'm just kind of poking around and seeing what spooky shit I can notice without coming across too rude to our host while we wait. Uh, make a psychology roll for me yourself as you look around. Alrighty, let me just find my stat. Okay. Dice don't fail me now. You've already failed me once. <laughs> What's that? Um, is that as bad as I think it is? Yep. That's a 65 over a 60. Okay. You could spend luck. Um, it's up to you if you think this is a role worth spending luck on. Uh, I don't or think so. I'm go. just trying okay. to like observe without yep. coming off too nosy. So you've come in here and you're not completely oblivious, but you're so distracted by the thoughts of, of the rumors you've heard about what's happening here, which we'll, we'll go over very soon and trying to find that spiritual connection that you can't see the wood for the trees. Uh, you just don't notice anything beyond what I've already been able to see. Um, it was fairly close. I will give you, it's odd that there's no staff here. You do note that it, it's very odd that there's no staff here doing mm. anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a bit odd, isn't? Don't you think, everyone? There's uh, where we've been invited to this lovely mansion, and there's no one attending. Or oh, perhaps they have the evening off. <sighs> or perhaps they're wanting to use discretion and don't want people around to hear what they're going to converse with. That's a good point. I'd like everyone to make a listen check for me, please. Let's see if this set is going to fail me significantly again and going through a dice jail straight up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. They're going into a dice jail. Yeah, yeah, same. My, these are, these Eat are going them away. Immediately. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, uh, Mr. Keeper, this is an excellent opportunity to explain what happens when you roll a 97. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Great. So I believe... Um, yeah, there's I got not, a 90. There's not really... So I, I think 97 or above is a critical fail, isn't that right? Isn't Correct. It? Yeah, so 97 or above is a critical Your fail. Your eardrum explodes. It just means you actually really don't hear anything. Uh, <laughs> fortunately for you, this isn't a moment of high consequence, so nothing shocking is going to happen to you. But a critical failure means what didn't work really didn't work. So what I'll say for you, uh, Dr. Guerin, is that other people who failed will hear 
a muffled conversation happening in the next room but can't make out the words. You are absolutely unaware that there is a conversation happening in the next room to the point that when the door opens in a moment, it shocks you a little bit because you didn't think there was anybody beyond the door. Did anybody pass? Um, so I got 44, but I'm going to spell, spend some of my luck points to get that underneath 40 so that I can hit my success. Certainly. So <laughs> you've succeeded. Uh, Detective Montague and Mr. Curtis, I gather from your displeased uh, grumblings earlier, you did not pass. I got a 90 for a 20. <laughs> okay. You still hear the grumblings because it wasn't a critical fail. And yourself, detective. The good detective rolled a zero, motherfucking seven. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Yeah. So you definitely hear this actually quite clearly with your attuned police investigator ears. And uh, you, Ms. Baldwin, in fact, you do hear, but only just, and you have to really focus. And that's that, that luck point. You have to really sit there and, and attune your ear. And you just hear a, a short conversation happening outside between a, uh, a woman who you recognize the voice of Emily Bailey and a middle-aged man who you assume is her husband, Mr. William Bailey. Their voices are raised. You hear Emily say, why bring outsiders in? I'm sure it's just been our imagination or, or some prowler. There's no need to take this any further. And she's swiftly cut off. I have had enough of this, Emily. I know what I saw and I want to get to the bottom of this. I will not have my enemies or some prankster play the fool with me on this. Enough! Now I need to speak to my guests. Make yourself useful and find my keys. I was sure I had them only this morning. After this altercation, which which uh, the two of you hear, um, the door opens, which gives Dr. Guerin a, a, a bit of a start. Uh, the door opens and William Bailey enters the room. He is dressed in a tailcoat suit with a loosened bow tie. The top button of his shirt is undone. He looks gaunt, haggard and tired, like he hasn't slept in quite some time. Uh, and he, he introduces and shakes hands with you all as he says, I welcome you all to my humble abode, albeit under rather unsettling circumstances. As you are all aware, I have been living in fear for some time now, and I cannot express how relieved I am that you have all agreed to come here today to help me solve the mystery that has been plaguing me. It has been some time since I have been able to have a good night's sleep. My anxiety has driven myself and my wife to our wit's end. The past several weeks, we have suffered numerous break-ins and apparitions on our property. I have bolstered our security and staff, but to no avail. If you have all kept up with the local papers and gossip, you may understand why I initially believed that the Learmont family was behind these break-ins and the stalking figures on my manor grounds. And indeed, I will say you uh, will all have seen newspaper articles and such in the recent weeks about this ongoing feud between the Learmont family and the uh, Bailey family about uh, some matter to do with the mine they ran, that, that Mr. Learmont ran, who Mr. Bailey sort of conned him out of a lot of money in the purchasing of that mine. And there's been a spat between the two very wealthy families ever since. Uh -oh. um, but the longer this went on, uh, the more glimpses I caught of these, these figures, they did not seem to be human. Wispy shapes, apparition, sometimes within this very room during the late evening. I have begun, despite myself, to suspect a more sinister explanation for my troubles. And after a terrifying encounter last night, perhaps even the early hours of this morning, on a patrol of the house as I could not rest, I saw a dark, shadowy figure on the stairwell and fired shots from my revolver. I was horrified to discover that the rounds went straight through the figure and damaged a statue of St. Michael I had positioned directly behind it. What has terrified me is that the rounds seemed to go straight through the figure and in the moonlight I swear it was translucent and I could see the stairs beyond. Its face. Its face left me distinctly unnerved. Its hideousness is a difficult thing to describe. Since then, I have been unable to sleep or rest, and I am often compelled to patrol these grounds at night. My loaded revolver, my only comfort. I beg of you to assist me. Detective Thomas Montague, the Ballarat police assure me that your expertise in investigating criminal cases is second to none. Your insights will be invaluable to me. I hope, despite your lack of local experience. 
Mr. James Curtis, as a spiritualist, I believe that you will be able to help me understand the potentially supernatural forces that I have been grappling with. Your knowledge of the paranormal is well known to my dear wife, whom I believe you have met. I look forward to learning from you, sir. Dr. Bella Guerin, I am grateful for your presence here. I believe that the analytical skills and attention to detail that my colleagues at the Ballarat School of Mines tell me you display will be of great benefit here. Your scientific expertise may be essential in unraveling the mystery that has been troubling me. I am an open-minded man, but I am not given to ignoring the possibility of a logical explanation. And on such a note, Ms. Clara Baldwin, the magician and skeptic, I understand that you firmly do not believe in the supernatural. In fact, my wife and I saw you perform some time ago with your uh, husband. Uh, a terrible shame you won't be performing together again. Although I am not convinced that what I have experienced can be explained away so easily as a common illusion, perhaps your in-depth knowledge of hoaxes and magical effects can prove me wrong. I believe that with all of your help, we will be able to uncover the truth behind these events and bring an end to my discomfort. I can, of course, reward you all significantly for your time and efforts and cover any reasonable expenses that you may incur. Now, please, investigate as you will. However, I do ask that you refrain from entering my private rooms on the second floor. There have been no sightings there, and I would not wish to waste your time. Uh, thank you. And now open the floor to conversation. Um, Bella will get her medical bag out and she'll take out um, like a stethoscope and, and things that she can take blood pressure with and all that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and she'll be like, uh, Mr. Bailey, I'm going to uh, record some of your responses with both heart rate and things like that. Very good. While you converse with the others, partially for my own baseline, but depending on what is occurring that can actually well make it difficult to sleep and then once things go past a certain point it can actually cause your mind to experience things that aren't there whether you've experienced them previously by way of almost like a flashback or just misinterpreting the sensory input of your surroundings. I apologise, uh, Dr. Guerin. Are you suggesting that uh, these apparitions may have been all in my head? Uh, well, in technicality, but not necessarily by imagination. People can sometimes experience a wrong interpretation of sensory input, depending on how much sleep deprivation has been experienced. Or your mind could be trying to connect to previous experiences and mixing up the recollection of those memories with the interpretation of new stimuli. I understand. I've always flattered myself to be a very strong-willed man, but in recent times I must be given to put my ego to the side. Uh, uh, I do consent to you taking these these measures. Thank you. I think, I now, think of course, Thomas um, at that point will pull the book that he found on anxiety disorders and hallucinations mm. and such. Uh, it seems that the good doctor here isn't the only one who thinks that perhaps this might be some kind of condition i see uh yes i i i see i i did forget to put that book away it is rather embarrassing for a man to uh especially a man of my standing in the local community to admit he has such and you can tell that he's quite embarrassed by this uh especially in this time period for a man to admit any mental a man especially, but anybody to admit any mental sort of failing, it's a very difficult thing. Uh, far, even in the 21st century, we are struggling to talk about mental illness, uh, and it is a good 140 years before that. Mental so, health is important. Uh, talk about it. Touched. Do all the things you need Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. Talk yep. about mental health. Very important stuff. Um, outstanding. What I will have you do, uh, Dr. Guerin, is mm. I will have you make a medicine roll. Okay, um, with different dice. By all means. <laughs> um, now, you wouldn't have that sort of, you know, your uh air pump up uh arm no. or anything you'd be using no. a stopwatch or a fob watch and and, and yeah. his wrist and all of that but you can do all of those things as the conversation goes on just fine uh clara would um ask if uh after um servant servants quarters that sort of thing going mm -hmm. uh your domestic staff are they on premises uh 
Yes, I see. Um, I will quickly resolve this dice roll and then come back yeah, to you. Yeah. How did you go? Uh, with it? Hard success. Outstanding. So I will say you can make a psychology roll uh, with a bonus die. So that's an extra D10 that's the tens, and you take the best of the tens instead of the worst one. Um, as you're rolling that, uh, yes, indeed. So um, we did have staff working, uh, but unfortunately, as as the events increased in in the amount they were happening and it, it, I, I found it best to send some home. Some were not comfortable working here of an evening and some simply were getting in the way, uh, especially since I believe that hired goons, let's say, from the Learmont family were being sent here to, uh, to harass us. I thought perhaps some of my staff could not be trusted. Uh, perhaps that was not entirely fair, but... You could understand with my anxiety. We felt, my wife and I felt uh, two nights ago that it was best to send our staff home. Does that include yes. the extra security? Uh, yes, you... it does. Uh, I found that I simply was not comfortable having armed men on the property that were not myself. Tell me, did any of these armed men, before you summarily dismiss them, also see these things that you claim to have seen? Not as much as I have. Uh, my my wife and the other staff have seen flashes of light, movement, uh, perhaps a figure in a window, but when they look back, it is gone. None of them have seen a figure or a spiritual apparition as clearly as I did, especially in the early hours of this morning, the one that I fired at. Uh, it, I assure you, it was there. It was not a trick of the light. It was not confusion. It was a clear, almost literally clear, and that it was uh, not entirely solid in its appearance, but it was there. But nobody else has seen anything quite that, quite that short. How did you go on your uh, psychology roll there? Another hard success. Excellent. With a hard success, you really can tell he's not putting this on. He's actually terrified. And he's putting on a very brave front to not show how terrified he is because he is a skeptical man and he's had his skepticism shaken uh and his wife especially has been encouraging him to seek this help and to to bring people in uh and him finally doing it is is out of sorts for him uh, you can also tell with a with a hard success there um, although you didn't notice the pipe and the, the liquor uh, and the wine glasses around, you can actually, I will say with a psychology roll, a hard success psychology roll, you can smell uh, liquor on his breath. And you can see in his eyes, you can see in, in the wrinkles around his eyes, the bloodshot eyes, the color of his skin. He has been heavily relying on alcohol and tobacco probably nothing else but heavily relying on alcohol and tobacco to relax for a while and he's clearly heavily sleep deprived uh please carry on that's the information i have for you there carry on uh, yeah. i think montague will head outside and uh with the intent to inspect this statue that was fired into but um very good feel free yep, to very good so we'll we'll roll along to that in in mm. a moment if you want to go and do investigating is there any other questions you have for mr bailey um, Clara would like to ask if Mr. Bailey has had um, gasworks recently appointed upon the, the property. Uh, um, is the lighting gas lit? Yes, uh, the, the lighting is indeed gas lit, uh, but we, we did consider that about a week hence, uh, a week gone by and had a professional come in and inspect and assured us there was no leaks. Excellent. Yes. Just Ruling Very... out all any and all possibilities I, I, before we I jump think, to... Yes, I appreciate Montague, your thoroughness. Montague might kind of stop on his way out the door at that point. And, uh, why would that be important, exactly? Oh, if there's a small leak, it might cause... Um, the, the vapours from the gas lines may cause hallucinations due to oxygen deprivation. Yes. F fascinating. Um, fortunately, fortunately as well, as I do often uh, smoke my pipe in these rooms, uh, we do wish to make sure the gas is quite safe. Um, now, if there are no further questions that you have for me at this time, I I apologize, but I would very much wish to retire to bed. I I feel very tired, of course, as I'm 
sure you can see. Uh, and I'm hoping that knowing you are here as four, four people in very good standing in the community investigating on my behalf, hopefully will bring me enough, enough calm to get some sleep. Uh, if you have questions, my wife will answer them. She will be up in, my, in our rooms on the second floor. Uh, all you must do is come and knock. Uh, if that was all... Don't sleep too deeply, Mr. Bailey. I'm sure if I do have more questions, some of them will be for you. Indeed. Very good, uh, Detective. Uh, if, if permissible, uh, Mr. Bailey, am I yes. able to um, show Mrs. Bailey how to take your pulse so that if you become restless in your sleep but do not wake... She can examine some more of your responses to whatever you were dreaming at that time. Yeah. We continue our investigation elsewhere. Very, very good. Yes, I'm quite happy to do that. Uh, uh, Clara, not Clara, and that's you. Um, that's you, Clara Baldwin. <laughs> Emily, uh, Emily, come this way. And, and uh, Mrs. Emily Bailey re-enters the room, um, still looking a bit dishevelled, but uh, as she comes in, you know that seeing you sitting next to him, taking his pulse, you know, your hand is on his arm, um, and he's actually in, in probably the most relaxed state that she's seen him in for a while. So she she seems quite happy about that uh, in her own way. And she comes in and you tell you show her how to you know, take a fob watch and, and count the amount of beats and, and all of that and how, to note, how, how best in your shorthand to note that down in a notebook. Um, and, and that's it. If there's no other questions for them, they will retire to bed and give you free reign of the manor grounds. Excellent. So Thomas Montague, you wanted to go into the, um, the hallway of the, uh, of the manor. So if you want to bring up map one, uh, for the audience, as well as the players there, just to give you a general idea of, of where in the house you can look at, this is the actual original blueprints as well for the real Mr. Bailey's Manor, which is now part of the Ballarat Base Hospital. Map one, um, William Bailey's Mansion. So you can investigate, there's essentially the drawing room you were just in, which you've already looked around in. There's downstairs, the main area. You've got outside in the rear and outside front, and you've got upstairs, uh, there's another sitting area upstairs you can investigate. Um, so just straight in the hallway, I would like you to make a spot hidden roll. Mm -hmm. Anyone can do this if you're joining uh, the detective, if you're sticking together as a party. You, you are welcome to investigate rooms individually. Uh, this You're not likely to have monsters jump out at you uh, just yet. Um, but if you would like to stay together for simplicity, that's fine too. I'd say 20 on the spot hidden roll. That yeah, is that's a, good enough. Uh, success. So what you see uh, here on the ground floor, did anybody else uh, want to I got a 19, or? which is a hard success. Hard success, very good. Uh, 24, which is by one point, a hard success. Woo -woo. Very good. A hard, hard, hard failure. <laughs> so <laughs> Mr. James Curtis is still looking around, cannot see the wood for the trees. You're so, you're looking up. You're looking up like you're expecting to see spectres in the top corners of this high ceilinged manor room. Uh, which, by the way, for anyone watching, this is Mr. Bailey's mansion behind me. Um, in real life, it doesn't have tentacles. But... Mm, you say <laughs> that. Uh, so you're just looking up all the time, waiting. You see some cobwebs in the corner. No, no. Is that ectoplasm? No, it's just some cobwebs. Never mind. Uh, everybody else, you see in this region, in this area, uh, Detective Montague, I say you first see on a small table in the hall uh, is a loaded Smith and Webley revolver. Uh, and if you pick that up and have a look at it, it is loaded with four rounds. Um, you also, and this is all of you will see this, you see the statue of St. Michael at the bottom of the staircase. Um, and it does have a bullet embedded in the shattered statue. Uh, and what you notice with hard successes is there seems to be blood spattered in the course of the bullet at the bottom of the stairs there. Uh, you could make either a forensics or a biology roll. If you don't have forensics or biology, you can do spot hidden, but you will need a an extreme success. I don't think I do have forensics, but I do want to have a close. You definitely have forensics. Uh, Thomas Montague, you have a forensic skill of 50, which would go oh, to yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That was the uh, amendment. That's fine. Yes. Oh, it's, it's, look, it's... No, it's at 33, so it's a success. Mm. It's a success. Uh, with a forensics, a simple success would be enough. Did anybody else make a roll? 
I'll try for a spot hidden. It's not likely, but I'll try for it. Yep. Yeah, nah. 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 Okay. Um, so with your forensics role, detective, uh, you actually specifically detective, and this is where the forensic status come from, you bringing modern policing to the Australian uh, colonies and, and that region comes with the new art of forensics and understanding blood and blood spatter and, and how that happens. So what you notice is that the blood you can see is consistent with something being shot from a man that is about Mr. Bailey's height from the place he said he was standing and it hit a thing that was standing where he said he saw the spectre. It's consistent with that. But there's not a body. There's no people that got shot. It disappeared. And the blood seems wrong. It's oddly viscous and a little bit acidic, a little bit too dark uh, at this point as well. And if this happened in the early hours of this morning, so we're talking, you know, uh, 16 hours ago, it should be dry and it's not. There's still a, an actual uh, liquidity, I suppose, and there's a liquid uh, factor to this blood spatter that you find on the ground. Uh, Mr. Curtis, could you please make an occult roll, please? Okie dokie. So as you see the detective yeah. uh, looking at this blood, f- testing it between his fingers and seeing it's still tacky, Having a little taste. Yep. So by what you found, Detective, what Thomas has described, it checks out, except for the whole spectre that disappeared thing. <clears throat> How'd you go, Mr. Curtis? Well, one of my dice fell on the floor, so that was a 90. Uh, you can re-roll if it fell on the floor. I, I have a, uh, if it fell on the floor, you're welcome to re-roll policy. And by welcome, you have to be consistent. With Dance. It. You don't get to choose. So the floor is lava. That, so I, that die no lava. longer exists. <laughs> yeah. Uh, How'd you go? 42. That's better. My occult is 70. Excellent. So you look at this substance that the detective is is looking at, and you think that could be ectoplasm, um, which would be consistent with the spirit. Ectoplasm is something you'll often find after poltergeists or spirits or ghosts are in a region. Um, And it can come in all different types of colours and such, but that... Looking at it, you think this could be ectoplasm. Good lord. Is there is there a problem, Miss Baldwin? Oh, um... I have mean, you... th- this may look like blood, but it does not have the correct consistency in my own experience. Yes, I you're... find it troubling that a magician, of all people, is such a skeptic of the supernatural. Because it's all tricks... And, and showmanship. In every lie, there is a grain of truth, Ms. Baldwin. Goodness me. That doesn't would... mean it's the trick that's the truth. It's the entertainment they're providing and the joy that's the truth. My you shows... You have a point, Dr. Gurren. You may have a point. My shows are developed and produced in such a way as to educate people on the likes of your fine self and we do we... have oh, i'm sorry miss bald when i that's quite all right i was going to uh <clears throat> start rating it a uh guest of mr bailey's i should hush i'm just thinking that rather than us automatically presuming because it's not blood it must be supernatural open ourselves to the possibility of it's not blood because they planted something there or someone else planted something there, either for us to find or to continue to cause a detrimental effect on Mr. Bailey. If this was the case, whoever would, whoever has done so has a very good understanding of how blood works, but not its nature. But I'm wondering, Doctor, perhaps you've come across something like this substance in, in your own studies. Make a natural world roll. I believe you have a natural world. That's that's one that's so very rarely used. What are you doing? <laughs> so I've been trying to think of a role for trying to figure out whether or not this is like stage blood. You know what, Doctor? You can make a biology roll if you like. Oh, yes. do you want me to roll again? I, I know no. what the was. Use the same no, number. Keep, keep, keep the same dice. You can use whichever stat you like. 
Okay, so... I forget you're a doctor. You would have biology. <laughs> yes, I would. Uh, and it I was only just shy of an extreme success. My extreme was 14 <laughs> and I got 19. Oh. Okay. You're welcome to spend a point of luck for that extreme success if you like. I'm going to spend a point spend of luck. Spend a point of luck. <laughs> Even with an extreme success... You don't know what this is, but you are absolutely certain it's not blood. What confuses you is that you have come across what sometimes happens, and and uh, certainly uh, Clara Baldwin would know this in, in your line of work, um, what sometimes happens is charlatans will create uh, a false ectoplasm out of shaving cream and, and some other ingredients, phosphorus for that glow effect. Um, it's not that either. So if this is fake ectoplasm, it's not the usual kind of fake ectoplasm. Um, do with that what you will. Well, this is outside the realm of um, my previous existence, uh, previous understanding rather. Um, doctor? Well, I mean, it's not blood and you know, I can tell you that there are some things that are behaving very differently to how blood would normally behave. So if someone was trying to make something, I don't necessarily think that they were trying to imitate blood or else mm. they would have made sure it was with a substance that would have dried by now, such as using various syrups that have a similar viscosity. Well, whatever it may be, I'm inclined to believe it's of the extraordinary, and I'm going to take a sample for myself. Mr. Curtis, mm -hmm. I'm sure that that is going to be your opinion of many things. And so, I, I would ask that the, the kook leave the professionals to conduct this investigation. I will remind you as a lawkeeper, Mr. Curtis, you were invited here just the same as the other three. Um, I will also, um, no, that's all I'll say. The other thing has left my mind. I'll go back to yeah. it if it comes back to me. <laughs> exactly. My good sir, I was invited here the same as you. I have extensive experience with the strange goings on of this town. Not least, just a few, just a few blocks away is the dark and troubled history of the vine formerly the cornubian and our local order of the forests and my own contacts with my dear dear annie there is so much in this city unexplained you scoff but i truly believe and i would appreciate it if you would extend me the same professional courtesy if not personal courtesy, that I'm extending you. Personal courtesy is a sound request. Professional courtesy, we shall see. Very good. That bit of role play was accentuated by the wonderful mustache that James Curtis <laughs> Truly, <laughs> truly was. Uh, really wonderful. Um, the thing I forgot to mention was, uh, please write down, Mr. Curtis, that you do have a sample of blood from the staircase at the mansion. Um, where else would you like to look next? You I reckon you've had a pretty good look around down here. Oh, please, yes. Uh, Sorry. Where the statue was mm -hmm. up on the on the staircase, can I have a feel around for um, hidden compartments on the wall? Um, thinking, well, if something was here and it got yes. here, did it disappear into the wall like so many um, charlatans do on stage with trapdoors and, and whatnot? Please make a spot hidden roll. So you're looking in that whole area? Yep. The bottom of the stairs? Yep. That is a 37 for a success. Excellent. So with a success, you don't, you start with the statue and you feeling around for any catches. All you can find that seems out of the ordinary is the bullet hole itself and the damage done to the statue. There's another bullet hole um, in, the, in the far wall as it's just missed the statue. And as you look around, you don't find anything there. What you do find is in that sort of cupboard under the stairs region where there's a wall, there mm -hmm. is actually a hidden panel, uh, which you can open. However, there's not enough space for anyone to stand or hide away in there. What is behind that hidden panel is a wall safe and it's locked. I will make I a note. Sure. 
as a historical note, uh, that is a real thing that is there under the stairs. There is a wall safe under the stairs of the haunt of the haunted manor of Mr. Bailey. <laughs> Brilliant. I think that. Uh, any other investigations? I think the ahead, only please. other thing Montague would want to check, uh, t yeah, and it might be a bit of a stretch, um, is whether or not the the bullet hole then in that statue uh, looks like it would have come from the loaded revolver that he's found, which I assume yep. is Mr. Bailey's at this stage. Um, make a firearms handgun mm. check but because you actually have the revolver in your mm. hand uh roll a bonus dice so roll the tens dice twice and take the Whoa. best lucky for me <laughs> uh 23 which will be success which will be yeah. yeah just a success yeah outstanding uh yeah absolutely it is definitely it's gun holds six rounds it's currently got four in it there's two rounds that are shot it's all consistent. You can even, um, you know, like a gun that's been fired and hasn't been cleaned, uh, you can smell it. And you can smell that this gun has been fired in the last 24 hours or so um, and absolutely would believe that consistent with what Thomas, Mont uh, not your Thomas, but with what Mr. Bailey has said, <laughs> sorry, uh, this very likely is the, right, is the pistol. On that note, um, so you're already armed with a revolver, mm, police issue indeed. revolver. Um, in fact, so Clara Baldwin also has a revolver, as does Dr. Guerin. Mr. James Curtis, you do not. I don't? Um, I'm not giving you any instructions here at all. I'm just noting that, that uh, Detective Thomas Montague, the uh, uniformed mm. police officer, is currently holding two revolvers. Correct. He is packing. Okay. He's, no, and he is later. not inclined at this stage to it's, give a loaded okay, gun. The character sheet has a revolver. Oh, oh. Does it? Yes. <gasps> And mine does not. It says that I have a personal I'm revolver. I'm so sorry. Um, I was incorrect. James Curtis, you have got a revolver. Clara Baldwin, you do not have a revolver. No, I do not. I've got but a knife. say no. Hmm. Not on my sheet, you don't, but I'm happy for you to have a knife. That makes perfectly good sense. Small knife for protection, apparently. Lovely. <laughs> ah, yes, in your inventory. Yes. Beautiful. So you've got that knife. Lovely. Yeah. Um, moving on. You guys reckon you've probably... Had a good look in the in the downstairs areas, um, uh, as far as you're aware. But there is still outside at the back, outside at the front, and upstairs. Mm. Well, I assume this individual will have fled after having been shot, if that's indeed what happened. Uh, perhaps some investigation of the exterior at the front, perhaps. Um, as the detective, would you like to make a determination as to whether you want us to stay together as a group or split up? I myself would like to look at the upstairs area to see whether or not someone has used some form of chemicals or other altering substances to influence Doctor, Mr. Bailey's psychological state. Doctor, you are more than welcome to conduct your own investigation. I personally would like all of you in the same spot so that I know that the area that you're investigating hasn't been interfered with in any way when I make my own investigation. But by no means will I stop you from going anywhere you like. Oh, I believe we have enough time to examine all of the areas. I just wasn't mm. sure whether or not people wanted to stay together or separate to split the work and report back findings. I will say for a mechanical purpose, usually sticking together is better. But in this house, uh, I don't I don't think it will matter too much. It will just be you each do a thing in whichever room you're in. Mm -hmm. So if you want to split up, I don't have a problem with that as a keeper. T together then, out front? Sounds like a party. That is Sounds absolutely good. fine. Very yep. good. So um... you head uh, out front of the building, and as you can see, it is this beautiful gothic manor. Uh, the gardens have become a little bit unkempt. They haven't been uh, unattended for very long, but long enough for a few weeds to uh, rear up their ugly heads. Um, at the front of the house, uh, please make a spot hidden roll. Everybody. Okay. Uh, just as an aside as well, yes. Um, I feel like James would already have met Dr. Guern because of his connections and history with the local suffragette movements okay that's perfectly fine if you guys uh are happy for that to go ahead i'm not going to get in the way whether, of that. whether they're friends or not is a different story <laughs> but i feel like we would have met a few times because it is here that here uh 
is a, a big and active supporter of yes. those causes. Also, uh, Dr. Guerin is is a uh, a very prominent member of the community at the School of Mines, uh, which is essentially what's well, TAFE now, really, in Ballarat in modern day. But it was essentially the same thing in the 1800s. Uh, it was an you know, educational facility. But they would have had a lot of lectures there at the School of Mines. Mm. Um, at the old Ballarat Jail is where they are housed. Um, and... So yeah, you might have even passed each other on campus. Excellent, excellent. Lovely. How did we go on our spot hiddens? Uh, bad. <laughs> Great. Seven, yep. Seventeen, which good. is a hard success. Very I'm good. Gonna switch. I'm gonna switch dice again. I have a <laughs> failure, but not a catastrophic one, so I'll keep these dice for a bit longer. Very good. You don't trip over something. How no. did you go I'm to? Remind me how percentile dice when you roll two zeros. Uh, okay, so that's a 100. That's a critical <laughs> fail. If you roll a double zero and a one, that's a one. That's a critical yeah, success. That's, that's awesome. You rolled a critical fail. With yeah, a critical I, I a fail. Double zero and a nine. That's really good. That's really, really good. Okay, so Dr. Guerin, you don't notice anything as you come out. Uh, Clara and James, you will notice what I will describe in a moment. You both got an extreme success, didn't you? Or a, a hard success, didn't you? Hard success, yeah. Okay, good. So you'll both notice what I'm about to describe. Detective Montague. As you confidently stride out front after having these people come with you, uh, you walk out the front door, you go off the pathway because you want to investigate that front yard and garden area that's off the pathway. Uh, your foot catches on a rock that's sticking out the side of the garden in the dark and you trip over and fall flat on your face. Careful, this is Call of Cthulhu. You don't take any damage. From that. That's like, that's dangerous. <laughs> you don't take any damage except to your ego. <laughs> this is kind of the worst damage of all. Stands up, brushes himself off, pulls out his pipe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other two of you, uh, so Mr. Curtis and Ms. Baldwin, you see outside there are signs of footprints in the soil, uh, in the soil, passing outside the front sitting room window. These footprints have been uh, slightly uh, damaged by the police officer that just fell in that patch of soft soil as well but you can still make out the footprints passing outside the front sitting room window the sitting room you lot were just in a moment ago uh in an alcove in that area there is a small pile of cigarette butts that can be seen as though someone has been waiting there for some time some of these cigarette butts seem to be from the last couple of days some of them seem to be at least a week or so old and have really been stamped into the dirt there so someone has been coming here uh, and standing here and smoking cigarettes regularly. Uh, with a hard success, you also see uh, that there's a, a large tree in the front garden, and underneath that large tree, there is uh, an upturned bird's nest on the ground. Uh, and and that, that's there, just upturned. If you want to see any more of that, you would have to go and investigate that further. Um, I'll, I'll wander over there and take a look. Lovely. Is, so, it seems unusual that while this is obviously a uh, resting, you know, relaxing place for the ground staff mm -hmm. to uh, take a break and indulge, uh, it seems unusual that this bird's nest would be turned, uh, you know, fallen down the way that it is. Certainly. So you go and have a closer look. Um, it, it's an upturned bird's nest. If you want to see what's in it, you will have to flip it up the right way in some manner um yeah I'll, I'll do that i will be could you describe how you flip it up i'll be as delicate as i can um let me just just check what i've got on hand <laughs> real quick there's a tree here so there'll be sticks around if you want to be yeah. very, very cautious i won't um you know what i'm going to just i'm going to slip out one of my my big heavy occult books sure <laughs> gently flick it with that so that if something comes springing out of it i can hold it up in front of me real quick with what you've described i'm gonna have you make a dex roll just a straight dex uh, <laughs> stat roll okay uh oof mm. i'm not happy about that you can push a roll which means you get to re-roll it but then any consequences i'm about to give you for failing if you fail again will be worse um, well, I have a feeling that anything that I get is going to be better than what I just got. Okay. All right. So you're pushing the roll. You have to describe what do you do to be, may take that extra mote of care to push this roll with flipping this this over with your book. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm going to, so yeah, I'm going to like wedge the corner of the book under the edge of the thing. 
Yep. And just sort of instinctively open the book. <laughs> okay. Just, just it's like just like a big leather bound. You know, uh, it's yep. it's. I shouldn't really be carrying this thing around. It's way too friggin' heavy. Yep. So but I'm just gonna wedging it under and then opening the book. How did your second roll go? Ah, uh, much, much, much better, but still Good. not great. It was, was it a 71. Pass? Is that still a fail? Yeah, that's still a fail. Okay. I don't have anything in my decks. You can anything. use. Oh luck. wait, hang on. Let me look up here. Oh wait, I'm gonna burn some luck. Okay, how many points of luck do you need to burn? Um, one. Ooh. One point. Whew. All right. I was going to ruin that lovely book of yours. Um, so <laughs> good use of a point of luck because, as as I said, if you fail that push roll, uh, if you, so again for anyone watching for that idea, if you'd failed it the first time, there would have been minor damage, whatever. Failing it as a pushed roll, I was going to utterly destroy that book. Yeah, um, but your book is safe except for a, a small bit of mud and, and any dew just from the grass that you're moving. What you find as you turn it over is that it is full of several broken blackened eggs that as they are smashed there is a pungent fluid uh black fluid spilling out of them and the fetal beings within are twisted and deformed these horrible looking birds uh out of the eggs and a mother bird lies dead amongst the eggs as well i need everybody who is witnessing this uh, to write, make a sanity roll, please, which means... No, I stayed by the cigarettes. You don't get You're close. You're all on your own, Mr. Curtis. I have okay, so never Curtis. been so glad to have tripped over my own feet. <laughs> I, I didn't even roll a spot hidden or anything, anything for this one. So, You're all you know, so far away. Yeah. Oh, well, no, I did, but I failed. I went nowhere near it. Very good. Um, <laughs> so remind me again, a double zero is 100, mm. right? That's a yeah. 100, which is a critical failure. Yes, good. Okay, good. I'm okay. Uh, what was the really, really good one again? Uh, double zero one, but I think double zero one to double zero three are both considered extreme. Okay, successes. well, I got a ten. Yep, so that would be a, um, most likely a hard success. Sorry. Uh, actually, it's just a success with, that's not how it works with, um, sorry, I'm just quickly looking at something. That's not how it works with sanity. You do pass. You do still take one sanity damage. So your okay. sanity stat is lowered by one. Um, because as you look at this, this feeling of disgust rises in your stomach, uh, as you see and smell this, this unnatural gloop and having to tackle with the, the mortality of these poor, innocent creatures that you've seen who clearly died in an unnatural and horrific manner. It makes you feel very sick. Um, but as a seasoned spiritualist, you, you are aware that sometimes supernatural things happen. You don't have to feel unsafe. You've been through lots of lots of strange things before, and you, you quell that doubt within yourself and carry on. How would you like to describe what you've found? Or would you like to describe what you found um, to your colleagues? Yeah, well, James is just going to kind of fall back a little bit on his mm -hmm. butt, and she's like, my word. Um... Yes, this the what well, I look. I don't know what caused this specifically, but these poor creatures have passed in a most unpleasant fashion. I wouldn't necessarily advise anybody else get as close as I did because the smell is untenable. It is unbelievable. But that's not right. And I think something very strange is happening on these grounds. Something supernatural, perhaps? Something strange, is all I'm saying. Well, in my experience, gravity isn't all that strange, and uh, I think Detective Montague... Yes, but gravity doesn't cause things to turn black overnight. It does cause things to fall, though, and Montague yes. will kind of look past... Uh, James and the nest then, and kind of just look up at the branches of the tree that this thing must have fallen down from so you don't see anything strange uh it is dark you don't see anything strange in the tree as you look up uh when you do look past and you see the uh the the upturned uh bird's nest as it's been flipped right way up do you approach or do you just what look at it from where you're at uh i think he would approach because he, he wouldn't okay. think that anything would yeah. so bad to, so, as to be a problem 
I won't describe it again uh, because I described it before. You all heard that. It's rather nasty. Um, I won't describe it again, but you do see as described and you will need to make a sanity roll. But as you have been forewarned, you won't necessarily take that automatic damage. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've had a moment to steal yourself, I suppose. Indeed. 36. For, uh, it's, yeah. Yeah. So that's below your sanity stat, I'm certain. Um, so you're okay. Uh, it is disgusting, but in your line of duties as a police officer you've seen some pretty foul things so you're okay would anybody else like to come and have a close look no but while i'm here with these cigarette butts and footprints mm -hmm. i would like to get out my wax impression board and um line it up with the footprint and make impressions for the length and width of the footprint very good um I'm not going to make you roll for that uh, because I wouldn't know what to use and it's part of your professional kit. So I will gladly say, yes, you managed to make a wax impression of the shoe, of the footprint. Mm -hmm. So you not only have the size of the shoe, of whoever it was that's been out here, but you also have the, the sole print, um, which most shoes were leather, so they were fairly smooth. But yeah. all the same, it's good to have that information handy. Very good. Um, Thomas Montague, can you please make a forensics roll and tell me if you get a hard success? <laughs> I do not get a hard success, no. Hmm. You're looking at this, uh, you're looking at the goop that's in the eggs mm -hmm. and you think, uh, what is it? I, this doesn't look like egg white or egg yolk or it's black. Perhaps it's gone moldy. You can't, you can't figure it out. Indeed. I think Montague's interest would probably be more perked by the uh, taking of the shoe imprint than anything mm -hmm. else. I'm sure I would have thought of that same thing, given the opportunity. Of course. Yes, yes with your, your history in this forensics and all that, I'm sure. Uh, Mr. Curtis, you were talking about uh, the contents of the, the nest turning black overnight. What was it you observed that made you certain it blew down last night? Um, well, if it's the the body of the poor mother, to be honest, it hasn't been picked at. It uh, to my to my knowledge, it hasn't been approached by any of the possums or you know wandering cats. It seems quite okay, and for there to be this much pungent black ooze for lack of a better term that seems to have happened unnaturally quick in fact um mr curtis can you please make another occult roll for me please indubitably 14. so this seems in fact now that you think about it the the goop in the eggs seems like a far more concentrated version perhaps of that uh very dark blood blood uh that that you have outside and indeed if you take out your small sample bottle you're not you can't be certain that it is definitely the same uh taste if you like but there is definitely qualities that they share hmm look i'm no forensic scientist or, or, or doctor but it seems it seems to me like there may be some connection between this goop and this goop so I believe again I, I might I'll grab another one of my my small vials out and I'm going and a, a very long stick <laughs> and scoop a little bit in, um, and just mm -hmm. snap the stick off it and put the cork on. Miss Baldwin, in your supplies there, would you have paper where the uh, type and nature of the paper is closer to what we would use for blotting? Um, well, I have a notebook and pen. Um, I imagine Miss Bailey would have a slightly higher grade of paper than the average bear. Um, I would I would say if you've got a notebook and pen, you would have blotting paper with you also, uh, so that you can write in your notebook and pen uh, without making a, a big old mess. Um, so I'm quite happy to say you've definitely just got blotting paper in your kit. Excellent. Um, so Bella will basically create two strips 
of from the the paper mm -hmm. um and then put the end in of one of them in the sample that we collected when we were discussing whether or not it was ectoplasm yep. and a sample in what was just collected from the bird's nest to see what the draw ups like and whether the patterns match each other or have consistency for ah, time. That's a fascinating idea. Uh, go ahead and make a biology roll uh, and at advantage. So, so roll your bonus die. Mm -hmm. I think we found the thinker of the group, folks. Uh, <laughs> don't call her doctor for nothing. Well, it's just that the fluid would draw up differently depending mm, on what mm. samples were left. Look, you don't need to defend your thinkiness to us. No. Yes, we're here it's for it. We'll back it. Um, okay, so biology. Uh, normal success, unfortunately. Not yep. quite a hard success. I will say with a normal success... Um, so if you take a small drop of each different kind and you pop it on there, they do seem to behave in a very similar way. However, um, you do definitely think the uh, the sample you took from the bird's nest is thicker, it is more concentrated, which means that draw, it happens slower, but mm -hmm. it still does happen along those similar lines uh, and in a similar fashion, just more slowly, possibly because it is uh, more concentrated. Mm. But... but Yes. Um, what you do find, though, is that slight, very slight acidity that it has. Uh, you can see that more notably on the paper is the way the paper actually almost uh, thins a little bit where it's the thickest of, of that um, as the, the fibre of the paper is lightly damaged. Uh, it doesn't burn a hole through. This isn't uh, no, no. xenomorph blood or anything like that, <laughs> but you can note that. Well, uh, knowing yes. how litmus paper was originally used. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, uh, what, what else would you like to do? So you've had a good look around outside the front, unless you have any other thoughts or anything else with the cigarettes there oh, or such. I would have liked to have collected at least one of the, the fresher cigarettes. Fresher cigarettes. Can you make a... Um, Whatever role you would like to figure out something about the cigarettes. I just want to have a quick look at your sheet to see what your scores uh, are. Uh, uh, I would say forensics, but you don't have it. I uh, do not. <laughs> you could use... You could use natural world, which is 10% for everybody. I'll let you do that. Or you can just make... You could just roll a d100 and tell me what you get. And if you get good enough, I'll, I'll let you know it because that works. <laughs> Okay, cool. Let's let's do that because I'm yep. looking at this going. Ah. It leads me very yeah. You don't really have much, so just make a D100 roll, and I'll make it a an intelligence check. Uh, but you need an extreme success for an untrained intelligence check to figure this out. So that's less than a 15 for you. Yeah, no, I got uh, 23. Okay, so you can't identify what kind of tobacco is in these cigarettes, um, but they're hand rolled. Uh, there's no filter in them, which is very common in, in this time period. People didn't put cotton filters or anything. It was just tobacco all the way through and you pinch the end and you'd have a little nub that you throw out. But you can't tell anything beyond that, but you do pop it away. Mm -hmm. And so. now having been prompted with someone else having found the cigarettes, Montague has also attempted to have a bit of a squiz. Uh, Will have pocketed yep. one and had a look at another. Unfortunately, Certainly. that is another critical failure. So oh, no. Outstanding. You're reasonably certain that this cigarette isn't just tobacco there's something else mixed in there but you can't identify Incredible. it well, you're pretty sure turkey. brilliant uh one <laughs> yeah. way or the other i feel like thomas montague is uh feeling the effects of being just just sheer awe at how brilliant these women are um <laughs> <laughs> he's literally and, tripped over himself <laughs> and on that uh, Miss Baldwin, as the person who noticed the footprints and the cigarette butts, yes, could you tell if it was someone coming from different directions or always the same? Because if it was a staff member, one would presume that they would be taking their smoke break from different places around the property. Mm. They were Very... all in one pile. Right, so the footprints were in like a garden bed and um like just standing there no so the footprints excuse me the footprints are somebody coming through to stand where the cigarettes are and then going back out mm -hmm. the same way they came the cigarettes are all in one location gotcha um so i would yeah um convey to the doctor that 
it appears like someone came here, turned around, left, rather than it being a thoroughfare. Uh, Mr Montague, what do you think our luck would be in trying to track the original point of these footprints and where they entered the property? Uh, detective, thank you. Uh, and yes, that's a fascinating idea. Uh, and on a forensic role of uh, attempting to do some work on those sure. footprints, it's a 19, which will be a critical success. Right. Hard so the, um, the footprints that you can see, uh, they go to that alcove with the, with the cigarettes at um so that's that sort of and with that role as well you can figure this is a great place to sort of hide and see through that window um if you if you so desired to it's a dark spot hard to spot but they just seem to go the same way you guys came back towards the main pathway to the front door mm -hmm. but uh not as close to the front door as you went so sort of lending more towards the front gate so almost as though they've come in the front gate and then veered off onto the lawn gone through the garden to get to that alcove made a beeline to get there as quickly as possible after entering the property yeah um but after being corrected that it's detective montague bella will uh, casually say i do notice detective montague that you didn't ask what my name was i'm dr bella Guerin. and as as i have referred to you as <laughs> such uh since mr <laughs> bailey introduced you uh, and a fine doctor you must be you've, you've made some very incredible discoveries here tonight so far I, I do believe myself and Miss Baldwin are uh, quite prominent people in our respective fields. Indeed. Sadly, uh, my work is quite demanding and I tend to, to focus very intensely on, on the rigours of uh, forensic investigation within the policing field as opposed to elsewhere. Uh, but perhaps... Perhaps I should look a bit further afield. I, I wouldn't mind uh, once we have investigated this situation and scenario, perhaps uh, having some conversations about your own methods and how they might be employed in, in the use of policing. Well, I mean, myself, I obviously focus more on fields such as biology and what we are now learning to be psychology as opposed to alienism. Um, but uh, of course, Miss Baldwin focuses more on physics and, and chemistry and other areas that can explain events. The more material plane of existence rather than um, the delightful Mr. Curtis. But to Mr. Curtis's like credit, he may come up with different interpretations for the significance of what he finds than what we would. Sure, but he, he still will. he still knows how to engage in various scientific methods to collect the information in the first place. All right. Uh, would you like to keep looking around at the front for anything, or would you like to see outside the rear or upstairs? Uh, Dr. Guren, I believe you wanted to investigate more inside, yes? I did. I wanted to see whether or not uh, there was some form of basically whether or not someone had been interfering with his food or drink to cause some form of psychological altering state. Hmm. So the best place for that would be the kitchens, uh, which are downstairs. Um, so if you all want to head inside towards the kitchen, so you head back in through the front door, uh, past the hallway, past the staircase and into that back room where the kitchens are. And I would say um, there's a liquor cabinet in there, but you know there's also liquor cabinets in other rooms. There would be a liquor cabinet upstairs in the in the sitting room, the drawing room upstairs. Um, but you you can go and investigate the food um, and 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 the other goods there. Uh, make unless you have something else in mind, I'd have you make a medicine roll to look for poisons or other things that may have been added. Um, I was going to suggest medicine because you know how to recognise smells of arsenic and all those mm. sorts of things as well. Mm. Um, and in true style, it's the waft. It's not the nose right over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, Promethean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to sort of sticky beak for evidence of things spoiling despite having been taken care of incorrectly mm. at least as far as we know to be correctly at this time sure thing uh make a uh, i would say medicine check but i don't think you have that um 
Make a spot hidden. Oh, you have a science chemistry. Make a science chemistry roll. Okay. How'd you go? Uh, I don't want to tell you. It was an extreme failure. <laughs> it's a 97. Okay, so you you open the larder, and I'll come back to you, Doctor, in a moment, but oh, right. you open the larder, and you find a block of cheese, and you look at it, and you think, this has clearly been tampered with. This cheese has become riddled with mould. There are clearly blue veins of mould running through this cheese that could be very dangerous. Perhaps somebody has injected some kind of blue-coloured poisonous thing into this cheese, and if you would like, you can bring this to the attention of your colleagues. I'm just going to pocket the cheese for now. Pocket the cheese for now? Yeah, yeah I'll, pocket see, cheese. I'll see if Very I can good. find anything else. <laughs> How did you I present go? my findings. How did you go, Doctor? Um, I had success. Very good. Um, now, you were looking for poisons and such. You don't find anything that's been poisoned. You think that uh, having a good look around here, it is unkempt and the people, there hasn't been staff here keeping everything in good order, but it doesn't look like anything's been tampered with uh, in any way. Nothing smells funny. Um, what you do notice, though, as you're looking around and you're checking for these smells is you get a very strong uh, scent of herbs, uh, prepared herbs, specifically... Um, sage wormwood and another another herb you actually can't quite place even with a hard success at this time um but definitely sage and wormwood uh that you're smelling as though it's been prepared and stored in in very large num like large amounts larger than a domestic kitchen would usually have these herbs hmm i I mean, both in sage on its own is fine. I'll identify this last one, though. Mm. Um, you do know, worm I should say, sorry, wormwood is poisonous, but uh, mm. you'd, you'd notice it immediately. You wouldn't use wormwood to subtly poison someone. No, but in smaller doses, it can be used for other psychological means. Mm. Um do any of you understand much about different herbologies? I, I can't recognise the last one in this combination. Uh, I'd go ahead and take a look at it, knowing that uh, I have some science chemistry. You um, can also make an occult roll, Mr. Curtis. I was going to say, I, I would like say... to make an occult roll to mm -hmm. um, try and discern, you know, metaphysical properties of herbs. Well, because sage can be used to relax and wormwood can be used to open mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a 39. Which would be a success for you. Ooh. Um, um, how did you go? Uh, so it's zero, zero, and then I got a two. Oh! Outstanding. Okay. So, Mr. Curtis, you notice that it is... You, you, you recognise that, and you do as well, Ms. Baldwin. You recognise that the third herb is St. John's Wort. Uh, and uh, Sage Wormwood and St. John's Wort uh, are often used for all kind of spiritual... Uh, things or kind of um you know smudging or seances or that kind of thing that you'd use um what you find with that extreme success ms baldwin is that with your extremely keen nose and that you've noticed this is that not only can you smell the sage the wormwood the saint john's wart you can actually follow the remnants of a smudging uh pattern throughout the house starting here in the kitchens where they must have prepared the herbs and, and loaded up the um i blanked on what they're called the the thing you hold that's got the smudging happening in it somebody write that in the comments sensor maybe. sensor okay. thank you like, <laughs> where the sensor actually would have been uh traveling and you can follow it it goes sort of down out of the kitchen down the hallway into that front room and then up the stairs And you actually um, notice that that strange smell you noticed when you first came into the house must have been this. Must have been that. Um, so I will go mm, sage, definitely. Wormwood, yeah, interesting. Um, I believe I'm de detecting a hint of St. John's wort. Um, yes, indeed. Um, I think it went this way. 
Interesting. Now, two, two relaxants and something that alters the psychological state of mind. Yeah. Mm. But now of that, course... What are you about to say, Mr. Curtis? Sorry. That upstairs, is that first floor or is that second floor? Depends how you describe. Uh, you're on the ground floor. floor. Uh, wait, so you're, you're on the on ground, ground floor, floor, and then there is a first floor above that, and that that's all there really is to investigate. There is that tower, as you can see above me yes. here, but there's nothing but going on up there. Are those the rooms that Bailey told us? There is there is his private rooms up there, but there's also a drawing room upstairs. Yes. That you okay. Can cool. Excellent. Yes. So are you all heading upstairs, or anything else downstairs you would like to do? Um, if there's an opportunity to, I should like to pocket a handful of salt from the kitchen. Yep. Ooh. Mm hmm Um, and... You just take a note of that. Yep. And if at all possible, a, like a, a champagne glass or something like that, something that I can crush. Very good. All right. Yep. So you okay. find a nice, fragile, thin-looking champagne glass. Uh, there is some lovely uh, crystal champagne uh, flutes, if you would like to use one of them. They're, they're probably very expensive. But uh, Mr. Bailey did say he would cover any reasonable expenses. Yes. I'm particularly looking after glass with mm -hmm. the concept of if I crush it and put it in front of a doorway, if someone tries to chance upon us or sneak up on us, we will hear the crunching of the glass. Very okay, wise. cool. All right, so you've got a glass in your inventory. Um, I would like to look around and see if there's any cast iron utensils. Uh, uh, yeah, there's there's fireplaces. There's a few fireplaces in the house. Uh, so there's cast iron. Um, no, that's not cast iron. That's uh, more fortunate. There would be a cast iron cooking pot in the kitchen, mm -hmm. certainly, uh, and probably some other cast iron skillets and and other um, other implements. And of course, there would be forged iron. Uh, fire pokers and such around too. Um, I feel like a skillet's going to be a bit too heavy, so I'll grab a fire poker and bring it with us. Certainly. So you're heading upstairs with a fire poker, a glass, and some salt. Oh, and the heat that Detective and Montague is <laughs> packing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, so you head on upstairs. Um, you head upstairs, you go up the stairway, you follow that smell, and as you approach the drawing room upstairs, the main room, unless you wanted to go to uh, speak to Mr. or Mrs. Bailey first. Oh, I'm fo um, following my nose. Yep. So you, you follow your nose, and it takes you to the main room upstairs, the drawing room. And that faint smell you've noticed, and you've now identified as that smudging uh, herbs, uh, becomes much stronger and mixes with the scent of tobacco that's clearly been smoked in here as well. But with your keen nose, the tobacco does not waylay you. You still find your way in. Uh, as you head into the drawing room, it is sim very similar to the room downstairs. Uh, there's a low table in the center of the room with some low chairs around it. Um, this is a room for sitting with conversation uh, rather than simply greeting people with. Uh, and I would like you all, as you come into the room, to make a spot hidden roll, please. Mm. 45 and my spot hidden 47 is... basic bitch success so i'm really good uh, would seem at 50. perceiving things uh Oops. montague has not done well with science <laughs> Over the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah that's that's a um, success did anybody get a hard success i got a 17 which is a hard success very good and doctor regular success lovely so all of you um see what I'm about to describe, and then Clara will come to what you notice uh, in a moment as well. Yep. Uh, as you come in, you notice there's a small burn mark on the table, which appears to be from incense. Uh, there also appears to be wax droplets on the other side of the table, which continue to have spilled down onto the carpet. So perhaps somebody's knocked over a, a melting candle or something, or burned some incense and scorched something. You're not really sure. With a hard success, uh, Ms. Baldwin, you notice that some of the wax, it's not all of the wax, but some of the wax upon closer inspection is not wax at all. It appears to be lighter in colour than wax, uh, almost luminescent and less acidic, but it's an equally viscous fluid to the residue you found upon the stairs. Uh, if you would like to make um, uh, some kind of science role or some kind of occult role to identify this. You're the only I one that spotted it for now. Should very much like to make an occult roll as I have mm -hmm. something in that rather than the something, which I Certainly. have <laughs> no science. So as I will say, your occult skill comes from learning how to uh, use your knowledge to disprove 
things like that, but it is still an occult skill. So mm -hmm. with that, how did you go? One. That is a critical, critical, critical <laughs> success. That's the best role you can get. What this... the hell is going on? I'm getting everyone's good roles. Yeah, nice. <laughs> what you find, uh, Ms. Baldwin, is that this uh, is, in fact, what I described earlier. This is a charlatan's ectoplasm. This is a mixture of phosphorus, shaving cream, and incense designed to glow and look like ghost juice, which is a disgusting thing I wish I didn't say aloud. Um, <laughs> say it again. <laughs> ghost juice. Uh, so... This makes me think of uh, Doom Patrol. Oh, God. Oh, love that show. <laughs> uh, so this is definitely not what you found on the stairs. This is definitely not what you found. This is a charlatan's attempt to create ectoplasm. Uh, with that extreme success, what you also see is... Um, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze in a moment. Oh my God, a couple <laughs> of you Jeff. did Thank that you on stream. How dare I, on a wow. live stream. Incredible. Regular bodily functions. Oh, good Disgusting. Lord. Disgusting. Uh, <laughs> what you also spot with that extreme success is little tiny scraps of paper uh, on the carpet and nestled underneath uh, one of the lounge chairs. This is flash paper. This mm -hmm. is what magicians, like yourself, you use this stuff all the time on your own mm -hmm. stage. This is what magicians use to create impressive, fiery spectacles. You yes. bring this paper and you go, be gone, spirits, and it goes, Phoop! and everybody goes, oh, that's very impressive. But there's <laughs> nothing magical about it at all. No. It is purely smoke and mirrors. Uh, so that's what you notice by having a closer look in this room. How would you like to share such information? I shall follow my nose to the table. I go, oh, I think I'm getting a vision. There, upon the table, the culprit. There's ectoplasm there from that darned spirit that's been haunting this house. Using all of my stagecraft. <laughs> okay, make a uh, a charm or a fast talk roll. Um, what have you got? So You've got, got neither both. of those. Oh, you do I've got both. both, and they're both the same, oh, um, so same score. Um, yep. So let's make it a. Well, it's up to you. They'll they'll both do the same thing. The only real difference, so charm and fast talk are. Uh, you know that social skill use. However, if you use persuade, persuade means you spend time. So if you want to use persuade on somebody, that means you are implying or spending at least 10 to 15 minutes having a conversation with a person. Right. In this case, use charm or fast talk. Yeah, I'm absolutely pulling Curtis's chain here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a success at 34. At 34. I will make this... I'll, it's up to you, Mr. Curtis. How susceptible are you to this? Would you like to make an opposed role or would you like to just run with this? That's a good question. She oh. has been openly skeptical. Yeah, that's, yeah. What that's what I'm <laughs> yeah. thinking. Yeah. No, I'm going to. Curtis is a believer. Right. How like likely is it? <laughs> for so yours was a regular success. Was I it, am Clara? a believer. Was, was like, so can you Clara please... suddenly turning around yeah. and acting like a believer is going to get my hackles up? Can you please make a uh, an intelligence roll, and you need at least a hard success to succeed so less well than i'm pretty sure that i just cocked that up what's a hard success again for you for an intelligence role yes i'm looking at the right sheet this time you want to get less than 40. oh in that case yeah i've got 26. okay you do see for a second for a split second you're like oh my goodness something's actually oh never mind no she's just having me <laughs> miss baldwin Mr. Curtis. I know that you do not agree with my thoughts and methods or my beliefs. But please, can we have a modicum of respect for each other? Please. My entire profession is to call out charlatans like yourself, so i will conduct myself with a modicum of grace which my mother taught me um and should you ask more of me i shall have a modicum of fists which my father taught me well i don't see any need for us to come to fisticuffs then stop making egregious 
questions and requests of myself. <clears throat> Lovely. Well, you've all had a good look around in this room. Uh, you may still go and inspect the rear of the house, if you wish, and you may go and speak to either Mrs. Bailey, or you can in, uh, endeavour to see if Mr. Bailey would speak to you again. And there might be some other things that you want to investigate after that time. Uh, I will say, however, um, we're very nearly done with investigating here at the mansion, and we will have some time, a bit of a break, uh, before we continue with this adventure. Uh, so we can either do that now, if everybody feels like having a quick cup of tea now, or you can wrap up what's happening in the mansion before we take that break. We'll leave it to the players. Um, the last thing that I would like to do is to have a look at what Clara was just making a big fuss over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then just see what else is around, because obviously, like to me, I would, I would kind of, I feel like I would know that if Clara's making a fuss over it, it's evidence of chicanery. Yep. Yes, yeah. And yes. I would like to see what I can find out about why somebody would be trying to fake this mm. when there is some actual weird shit going on. Yes. So you and you would know, um, as a, as a genuine spiritualist, you you absolutely believe there are charlatans out there, and they give you a bad name. Uh, is the problem there too. So make a spot hidden, make another spot hidden roll. Or did, wait, did you already succeed your spot hidden roll? You did. Um, yeah, just a basic yes, success. Did. Yeah, great. So you go and have a look and with, with Clara having pointed it out, um, you do see uh, there is that ectoplasm, but you recognize it, especially after she has made that deal, as this is false ectoplasm. You see the flash paper as she's had a look at it because she's drawing it out. Having a look around, you don't see anything further. You believe that perhaps somebody held a seance here um if you hadn't already had it pointed out to you you might have believed it was a true seance but after closely looking it was clearly a false one but most of the evidence is being cleaned up apart from those droplets of wax droplets of false ectoplasm and scraps of flash paper excellent okay good good oh dear i've snapped the tip off my sharp dice i think that's not good oh no um, um, Mr. Sorry. Curtis, uh, having been within various forms of company that you keep, are you able to tell who's, for want of a better term, trademark is stamped on using these types of methods to... Uh... If I'm being completely honest, these are the, the most basic of basic methods of taking advantage of those like myself that have a leaning towards the spiritual so unfortunately everything from false mediums to stage magicians like clara here would would and could have access to these methods and these materials so i think we're going to require further questioning and further investigation to find out exactly who did what in this room? Well, I do remember that we were told Mrs. Bailey is more open to spiritualist themes than Mr. Bailey is. It was potentially her that brought someone into the residence in the hopes of aiding her husband. Indeed, indeed. I imagine that most likely it, it would have been uh, the Lady Bailey. We will have to find out who it could be uh i do know that in recent times uh there have been a few folks from over in the 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 united states have been visiting our fair city i am not yet familiar with all of them but i am passingly familiar with some of them and we could mention a few names and see how the lady of the house responds very well. Would you like to go and knock on the chambers of Mr. and Mrs. Bailey, or anything else you would like to do beforehand? I think I'd like to wait until we've done a bit of look, bit more looking around and figured out mm -hmm. anything else first before I interrupt sure. our highly strung host. So the only place you haven't had a really good look around at in this house is the rear of the property behind the manor. So if you'd like to go down the stairs again and head out that way, if there's no um, 
Yeah, oh, absolutely. Look, don't, don't you laugh, Tal. Don't you laugh. You'll get me started. Mm. I had to hold it before. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been I've been holding back ever since there was the jokes made about the gas and then talking about the rear of the property. And it's like, Just a, a nice, <laughs> nice little squirt of ghost juice <clears throat> in the mix. And uh... yes. <laughs> yeah, after I the wasn't ghost say juice and Shannon said the rear, I did snork. Yeah. <laughs> I also said if you'd like, yeah, never mind. All right. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, no. if you would like to go to um the opposite of the front <laughs> of the uh, matter. Yes, indeed. Um, excellent. So you head down, you go down the stairs, uh, the you body head out of past the, the kitchens, yeah. um, and you head out the back. Now, there's there's just some garden beds here. There's not really too much to look at. Uh, a spot hidden or natural world roll will do. Twenty. Twenty, great. Uh, four. <laughs> Four. Nice. Fantastic. 48. Montague's still chuckling over ghost juice. <laughs> <laughs> you just heard it from the ether. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it the... Um, since there was a hard success in the party, that, that's all you'll need for this. Uh, so there are various uh, herbs growing in the garden, uh, some of which have been disturbed and roughly harvested with little care for actual gardening uh, skill. Uh, the damage mostly is to the sage and the wormwood bushes, as though rough handfuls have just been torn from them several times repeatedly over the past few weeks. You don't find any St. John's wort, uh, just wormwood and sage. So the St. John's wort must have been sourced elsewhere. You must mm -hmm. assume. Mm -hmm. That's all you can find out the back, just those herbs uh, that have been roughly disturbed. So, uh, unless you have any other brilliant ideas, of which you've already had several that have thrown me for a loop, which has been good fun, um, unless you have any other ideas, would you like to go and speak to Mrs. Bain? Oh, so <laughs> very, so. very much. Yeah. Excellent. How do you approach the door upstairs of the chambers? Uh, you've been told that Mr. Bailey will be attempting to sleep and that Mrs. Bailey would prefer to be the one to speak to you. It is up to you whether or not you push harder against that. Um, I believe that whichever door we approach, knocking softly would be the best option because we're not wanting to wake anyone. Yes, they are sharing the same room, so it would be the same. It would I be was not making door. presumptions given the no. era. <laughs> no, they, they do share a bedroom. Um, <laughs> They're they're, uh, they're not quite that uh, stuffy. Mr. Bailey did have money. He did come from some money, but he didn't start this wealthy. He uh, he became this wealthy through his legal acuity and some morally grey business practices, mm -hmm. uh, like which is which is a matter of public of knowledge. Era. <laughs> yes, you, you'd all know this by the way. This is a matter of public knowledge. Mm. Um, so yes, uh, who would like to do the knocking? I will um, allow the good doctor or Lady Baldwin to do so because I feel like it's more inappropriate for a gentleman of my myself to wake our host. In the I think of the Bella's going softly. So a soft knock. Mm -hmm. So not loud enough to wake anybody up. Uh, so Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Bailey is already awake, of course. So Mrs. Bailey uh, opens the door just a little bit. You can see that the light inside is very dim. Uh, you could try to peer past her into the room if you wish. Um, that that's up to you. One hundred percent. Yes, looking past Mrs. <laughs> Bailey to see what's uh, in this room. Go ahead and make the a spot same. Hidden. Did go you? Ahead. Anyone good. that would like to can make a spot hidden roll. It's a pity we can't psychically communicate where I could draw her away from the door and then you could open the door behind her and look so, through. 22. Uh, 32. Wonderfully yep. looking into the bedroom, I have rolled a 69. Um, nice. <laughs> I will burn some of my luck to bring that to a success <laughs> and to bring that down to 65. Lovely. Um, I should like to take a look at lady bailey um mm -hmm. and ascertain what manner of dress she's in is she in night attire or is she still in day dress she's still in day dress um but that unkempt day dress she's mm -hmm. been dressing herself um which she's used to doing to some degree she didn't you know but she has been dressing herself she hasn't had anybody helping do her hair she's also been struggling to sleep because her husband has been uh, but she hasn't she's not in sleepwear and you would expect that even given the circumstances, she probably will not change into sleepwear until either she's actually going to bed or her guests have left the house. 
Um, however, those of you that made a success for a spot hidden roll, you can make out the shape of what seems to be a very still sleeping man uh, on the bed just through the crack in the dim light. Um, if you want to look further, uh, you could roll another spot hidden, but doing so could possibly make you look a bit suspicious, like you're trying to be nosy while you're having a conversation. <laughs> but it, it, to, to the best of your knowledge, Mr. Bailey just seems to be asleep. Okay. Um, Mrs. Bailey uh, sort of quietly says, oh, um, how, how are your investigations uh, coming along? Um um, Wait, and then she actually step before she continues, she actually steps out and closes the door softly behind her and ushers you down the hallway a little bit so that you're not speaking just outside the room. Mrs. Bailey, did you contact a former spiritualist to come to the residence previously? Uh, she seems quite taken aback. I would like you to use either a charm or a fast talk. Um, Neither yes. of which is her strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> You, um, if you have a, a possible other skill you could use, you may. I think, well, Montague can jump in with, uh, and, and I'll remind you, Mrs. Bailey, you know it is important to tell the truth in such matters that we can get to the bottom of this investigation and we'll add uh, perhaps a fast talk. Uh, I was actually about to say, if you make the roll first, Detective, mm. and if you make it, um, I will give a bonus die also to the Doctor. So if you both make both make those successes backing each other up, you'll get a bit more. Yeah, nice. Uh, Twenty eight will be a success. Great. So, Doctor, make your own fast talk roll or charm roll, whichever one you wanted, and roll a bonus die with that. So uh, I rolled a thirty one, which mm -hmm. sounds good, except that I only have a fifteen. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah. um do, do, do. What I'll take out of this is that you start talking to um to mrs bailey uh and you've not met mrs bailey before like some of your colleagues have um you've met you've, you're aware of mr bailey but you wouldn't have even directly uh, met him before you just know he's a he's a regular donator to the school of mines which is where you do a lot of your work and you are gently aware at this time that mr bailey has taken an interest in your career because hmm. frankly you're very impressive and you know it uh and that's perfectly good but mrs bailey isn't used to being uh, confronted, and you were quite blunt as well in the way you approached her in the question, being confronted by educated women uh, in this way. So she's not offended or anything, but she just doesn't really know how to respond to you. And she defers to the authority figure in the room, which is uh, which is <laughs> Detective Montague. Uh, so she goes, um, <laughs> no, Doctor, I, 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 I didn't. Uh, the, the, the spiritualist that, that I am familiar with is is uh, Mr. Curtis here. I've met him uh, before at one of his shows, and and and, and he, he he is who I have invited. Uh, certainly not, no. Um, you, however, Detective, with your role, you can tell she's not being entirely truthful. Mm -hmm. Um. But I'd have to, you'd have to do something else to get anything else out of her because it wasn't you that started this, um, that started um, this line of communication. Curtis is going to step in. Mm -hmm. I just be like, Madam Bailey, are you perchance familiar with uh, Ms. Emma Harding Britton? Emma Harding Britton? Um, oh. Let's find <laughs> out. <laughs> yes, I, in fact, am. Um, why do you ask? Well, uh, she, I, I've not met Ms. Britton myself, but she's familiar to colleagues of mine, and I know that she was was visiting town recently. Uh, was I she was wondering really? if perhaps she may have come no, stopped by. I, 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 I did not, in fact, did not realize she was in town. I, I must have missed it with all of the happenings going on. I would have been quite interested to see. Yes, yeah, she, she had a lecture recently. I thought maybe she stopped by to to see the mansion herself. Oh. She has a, a an interest in you know historical places around the city and and uh, what happenings therein may have happened. It's certainly possible that she might have been turned away by one of our staff, but I I have not heard of her coming this way. Um, Doctor, I will allow you, by the way, to make a psychology role. In fact, any of you can make a psychology role um, from her answer a little bit earlier. A, a vibe check. Yeah. Mm. Uh, success on a 33. Yeah, um, She's definitely lying. Mm. Hard um, success on a 21. 
Outstanding. Yeah, she's and you are absolutely certain, Clara. She's definitely lying. She's not lying about um, the the lady that you brought up. And in fact, that ability for her to truthfully say somebody wasn't here has calmed her down a little bit. Like she's like, oh no, I've no, I've got them convinced. It's okay. But when she said no, I haven't invited any other spiritualists in. Uh, that was definitely an untruth. Mrs. Bailey. Yeah. Uh, perhaps. Uh, yes, perhaps detective. we could show you something that we have in fact found in our investigations. Oh yes. Uh, please. That was the drawing room. Yeah, that the the yes, fake yes. ectoplasm was found in. That was the drawing room upstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, I did promise before the game started that I would pay the cat tax. Yeah, nicely done, oh, cat. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> this is Gideon. Oh. Oh. Hello, Gideon. Um. Uh. Curtis wants to lean over to the detective real quick, and just whisper in his ear. Just like if if you can. Drop the names Henry Slade and Jesse Shepard to see if the madam has any reaction to these names. Uh, Montague will nod um, mm -hmm. and give uh, probably the first like positive interaction uh, that he's had with James Curtis. We'll just do like a little shoulder tap, like a little thanks. Thanks there, bud. Um, and, Good information. Yeah. Good lead. Uh, and Montague will ask... Mrs. Bailey, perhaps if uh, you could take us into the drawing room. We've found something quite interesting there that oh. I'm hoping you can shed some more light on. Uh, your earlier successful psychology role, uh, asking her to go into the drawing room and just look at something has, has put her off. Uh, it's made her uncomfortable. And you could pretty easily surmise that there's something in the drawing room she was hoping you wouldn't find. I can, of course, uh, but she I does can, follow of course, you. ask Mr. Bailey, uh, wake Mr. Bailey uh, and ask him to join no, us. No, no, that's um, perfectly all right. I'll, I'll come with you and investigate the, um, the drawing room. Yes. And she will follow you there. I've, uh, I've been reading up on some folk in, in these kinds of circles, uh, Henry Slade and Jesse Shepard in particular. Uh, perhaps their expertise might be useful here also. Uh, I, I don't believe I've heard of Jesse Slade, um, nor Miss Shepard, um, or Mr. Shepard, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with them. Um, but why, why do you ask? Are these more colleagues of yours, Mr. Curtis? Oh, um, well, I wouldn't say colleagues. I haven't, I'm not... Uh, you know, I haven't met them myself, but they travel in similar circles over in the USA. Oh, right. Well, but no, they, um... they do like to visit uh, the Melbourne and Sydney. Oh, so. well, I, I'm sure I would love to see a lecture from them if they, if they come back. But I'm sorry, is there something in the drawing room here that you wanted to show me? Indeed. You tell us that you've not had any spiritualists in the house but I ask you then what exactly do you make of this and points at the uh, quite dramatically <laughs> fake ectoplasm <laughs> what Amazing. about this uh, make a inspired oh, somewhat by uh, Clara's uh, theatrics earlier Make a fast talk and have a bonus die for the fact that you've used the evidence to help you. So you want to beat 40 and you can reroll the 10. Okay, so that is... Oh, that's a 12. That's a hard... Fantastic. She completely breaks. Uh, she actually... Her shoulders slump and her head falls and you see her lips start to quiver and she's holding back tears because she's just... She's been putting on this front to try to hide some small amounts of information from you and she's given up with that role and she says i'm i'm so sorry to have not been honest with you i'm just i'm so deeply ashamed you are not the first people that i have turned to for help you are however the first group that i have succeeded in in having my husband allowed to come in and assist we have been dealing with these incursions in our home for weeks and and I felt that something needed to be done. A week or so after these spectres started to appear, I was approached by a man who called himself John Stevens. Some people simply called him Father Stephen or Father Stevens. And he was a very confident, charming man. He seemed to be aware of these break-ins and he offered to help. 
He claimed to have had experience with spirits, and he described the apparition my husband had seen in great and accurate detail. He convinced me to organize a seance when, when William was out of the house one evening. He came in with some of his followers. Uh, it was about 10 nights ago, and we, we did hold the seance here, as you said. And at some point in the seance, a spirit appeared. It spoke in a, in a horrible, booming voice, and it claimed to be a manifestation of... a manifestation of William's greed and deceit in his business dealings. And she pauses for a moment. And you can see that this also brings her shame. She doesn't... These rumours of, of the way that Mr. Bailey has conducted himself in business. They've become public gossip. And Mrs. Bailey is very uncomfortable with that. Um, Stevens then conjured a great flash of fire. It was very impressive. Uh, he, he brought forth a magical scroll and, and it burst into a, a flash of flame and banished the spirit, which was seen no more that evening. He offered to cleanse the home entirely, but he said to remove all of the spirits permanently would cost 1,000 pounds. And he required access to the Mechanics Institute in town, which my husband is a, is a member in good standing with and, and does have uh, some keys and access to the Mechanics Institute. At one point, he, in fact, he asked me to steal my husband's key to the Mechanics Institute, but I would never do that. And I said I would not do that. And he, he let the matter lie. I'm sorry I was dishonest. I'm sorry that you were scammed, my dear. And she'll pick up scammed. some of the flash paper. Mm. Go, this is... This is Simpleton's stuff. This makes the, oh. the the flash. Is there a scrap of it that maybe hasn't burned so that I can... Um, I would say that in your kit, you would have some flash paper. You use this regularly. So mm. if you want to demonstrate a small piece of yeah. flash paper and how it works you can i do will so. i will roll up my sleeves mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah putting on a show put on a bit of a show and excellent can you make a, an appearance check uh no not appearance uh let's make this a power roll uh, that's usually meant for more supernatural power but i'm going to go with it as your uh as your show <laughs> yeah. machine uh, so, so that's, that's a, a 61, which is a success. Lovely. Uh, so you put on a wonderful show uh, and you, you roll up your sleeves and you bring out this flash paper and you, you do the whole kit and caboodle of, of, oh, they're going to do this. And then, and you even put on that um, spirits, be gone, foof. And the flash paper goes off and she, you see her going, oh my, oh. And she looks very impressed for a moment before she actually realizes how, how silly this makes her look. Um, and she's really actually quite embarrassed. There's no need to be embarrassed, dear. Uh, these people prey on the vulnerable, the tired, those who are looking for a solution to their troubles, really. This is, you, you should not feel silly for having been taken in by such a ruse. That is indeed their methods, but we have not yet spoken of their motive. You say that they relinquish this Father Stevens, uh, his yes. pursuing of your husband's keys, and yet I distinctly recall your husband pointing out that he had in fact lost said keys earlier this evening. Uh, yes, he... Well, he said he had, but I, I... I swear to you, I did not give his keys to anyone. And... and you you will believe her with your early psychology roles consistent with her behavior she does seem to be being honest um can everybody make an intelligence role sure. please just a base intelligence role and oh um i also had a question certainly with where the cigarettes were and where the person was hovering outside does that line up with the drawing room or the bedroom? No, they would have been observing that downstairs room from that location. Um, however, they could have seen through that upstairs room from perhaps the street a bit further out. Uh, possibly, you, you might think. I was just more thinking if someone tossed the keys out the window for them to take off with it, or whether they were. The oh, that would have been possible. Yes, or you whether just they were the to... voice or something like um, that. That would have been possible. Uh, however, the keys were lost more recently than the seance. Um, but that certainly would be a possibility if one way to get the keys. How did our intelligence rolls go? 80. Uh, 
I got a um, 15 for right. an extreme success. Also got a 15. Excellent. 14 for extreme success. Nice. Great. Uh, Mr. Curtis, was that 80? That's uh, Is that a failure for you or is that... I that's still a success. That. Oh, it's still a success. So yeah, your intelligence is 80. So getting an 80 is Ooh. just a success. You all remember at the name John Stevens or Father Stephen or Stephen as, as a religious leader, you remember actually something that uh, is in your handouts that, that you read, uh, were, were given at the beginning of the session, which is there's been a few articles over the last couple of months about yes. a local, let's generously say religious sect that has been uh, growing here in Ballarat the known as the Stephenites. The uh, and... <laughs> cult, yes. Uh, known as the Stephenites, who are led by a man by the name of John Stephen. Um, let me just find one of these. I will read. I will read one of these articles. There's a few here, but I'm sure we don't want to spend 15 minutes watching me read newspaper articles. Mm -hmm. uh, I will read one of these articles for now, and we'll see if any others come relevant later. This is a report on the Stephenite cult, titled "The New Lights Again." Considerable amusement was caused in the Creswick County Court on Thursday last, remarks the Ballarat Star, during the hearing of a case in which the Creswick Hospital Committee sued a man named Boyers for medical attendance at the hospital. This man is one of the fanatics who broke up a comfortable home, left a well-conducted wife and three children to be one of the followers of John Stevens, the head of the New Lights cult, who reside at Newellen. During the short time they were in the box on Thursday, they did not shine very bright. The wife of Boyers stated that the reason her husband deserted her was in consequence of her refusal to accompany him to Stephen's place and conform to his usages and customs. Her husband telling her that she would be required to obey Stephen's in all things and to do everything Stephen's wished. Stevens admitted in cross-examination that he once went into Mrs. Boyer's bedroom and kissed her with the consent of Mr. Boyer's, and the husband acknowledged that he gave Stevens permission to kiss his wife and seemed proud of the honour. Not so the unfortunate woman who seemed broken-hearted at the treatment she had undergone from this man who had sworn to protect her and his friend. The bench made an order against the husband for 18 pounds, four shillings and costs. So this is one example of, of the kind of uh, unsociable behaviour that this cult has been involved in and the very strange treatment they have towards the family unit uh, and especially uh, the way they would view women and, and how, how charismatic this Mr. Stevens is that this is the way he believes he can conduct himself. I will also give one more piece of information now uh, specifically to Dr. Guerin. You are aware of the Stephenites cult's operations because you're aware of a, a woman by the name of Mary Wessel, who is currently at the Ballarat uh, Asylum, uh, undergoing medical treatment after she escaped this cult. You have been trying to see her as part of your psychological studies. Uh, however, you have not been granted access to see her because of how fragile her state has been since she escaped. So you are, you, this is information you're all aware of, of this cult of people in the town. Uh, so there's that information dump. Back to the conversation with Mrs. Bailey. I think it stands to reason that this Father Stevens, the absolute cad, because Montague, of course, would have been familiar with the court proceedings more than anything else uh, of, of this recent court case. Uh, it may well be that the motive to these strange happenings lies at the Mechanics Institute itself. And perhaps we should move our investigations there. I'm sorry, did you say cult? Indeed, for surely. That's yes. what it is. Yes. Have you not oh, heard the stories I... of the travesties and disgusting behaviour of this man? No, I... Well, he, he seemed to me such a charming fellow. I Like your little spiritualist friend seemed so genuine? Mm. Well, like, well, well, he was... He, he was the one to perform the seance. He, dear, I, I am very sorry. I, I've been quite the fool. Not at all, dear. Like I said previously, these people prey upon those in states of vulnerability. Very well, if I you wish to. In this, I agree ahead. with Lady Baldwin. Uh, well, I, I can tell you 
he was interested in the Mechanics Institute and perhaps he would wish to go and investigate there. Uh, however, perhaps, uh, perhaps you would wish to speak to him directly. Uh, I can give you directions to his compound if you wish. It's only a 10 minute coach ride from here. And she, she shows you on the map where the Stephenites compound is. Um, if you wish to go and investigate there at any point. Uh, yes, magnificent. I think Montague Very Montague good. will pull his revolver out, do a cool little cool detective spin <laughs> of uh, of the revolver then, <laughs> and say, yes, I think we do. Uh, and I, I think we might call it there for a quick little break. I think that's a great being. one. Yep. Good, yep. so I will, I will just say uh, that's the end of that conversation. We'll have you all go downstairs and get into a carriage, uh, which is driven by one of the other constables from the Ballarat Police Station. Um, we'll call it there, and we will figure out where you want to go uh, after this break. You've got a few leads. You can head to the asylum to go and speak to Mary Wessel, the escapee. You can head to the Ballarat Mechanics Institute to investigate what they might have been after there. Uh, you can head to the Stephenite compound. You might wish to go and speak to Mr. Thomas Learmonth as well at his uh, property because he was a person of interest raised. Um, I think that's everything. What have I said there? No, I think that, I the think compound that's it. you may wish to speak to, the hospital, the Mechanics Institute, or Mr. Learmonth's house are all current leads you have. So let's call it there. How long would you like to break? Oh, I reckon maybe 20 minutes tops. 20 uh, minutes? We, Outstanding. we shall return after approximately that amount of time. And when we do, we will uh, roll up the first winner of the Ark and Forge giveaway. So if you haven't already, Excellent. exclamation mark, enter. We'll grab you a ticket for that. And uh, we shall see you in an amount of time. Very soon.
Woo! Da -da 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 -da. We are yeah, back. Welcome oh. back. Excellent. Welcome back, <laughs> investigators, as we continue our uh, our evening after investigating the uh, haunted, apparently haunted mansion of Mr. Bailey. Uh, and we find our investigators having uh, just concluded their conversation with uh, Mrs. Bailey upstairs uh, and discovering that there has, in fact, been interlopers in the house. Perhaps not spirits, uh, but in fact, uh, members of a local <clears throat> perfectly legitimate religious group known as the New Lighters or the Stevenites, uh, um, a group of religious fanatics who worship uh, their leader, uh, Mr. John Stevens. Speaking of religious fanatics, wait, no, that's not going to work as a segue. No, we're going to do the giveaway real quick. Let's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's okay. That one's closed. We're going to draw a winner for the first one and then we'll immediately kick off the next one and, uh, and draw a winner for that at the end of the stream. Uh, so I guess if you have entered... Uh, cross your fingers, toes, nostrils, whatever you need uh, to do. Whatever nudely appendages you may it have. It is done. Congratulations, Bionic Brain. You have, in <laughs> fact, won uh, the Ark and Forge code. Magnificent. Um, I hope your cats enjoy <laughs> it. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Excellent. I guess the probably the easiest way to handle that would be send me a whisper here on the Ark and Forge account in the chat. And I can send you the code. Brilliant. We'll make that happen. Um, now, while I figure out how to start the next one, uh, and I'll pop in chat when you you're, you all can start hitting enter again. Shannon, as you were. My apologies. Uh, certainly. Just a second. I've got to do something here. Lovely. Um, so we are back. We are, have just finished our investigation at the manor and are about to head to another location. We have a few leads uh, that you are all thinking of as you head down to climb into the coach that is driven by uh, one of the young constables who is uh, being seconded to to your work, Mr. Montague, as, as your driver. Um, the, the four locations that you have become aware of as potential leads are, are the mansion of Mr. Thomas Learmonth, who is a person of interest in this because of the ongoing squabble between Mr. Learmonth and Mr. Bailey over some business dealings they've had. Uh, there is also the Stephenite compound where the... Um, definitely not a cult, uh, bases their operations within Ballarat. We have the Ballarat Mechanics Institute, to which Mr. Bailey's set of keys has disappeared, and the Stephenites have shown some interest in getting uh, access to the Ballarat Mechanics Institute. And we have the Ballarat Asylum, uh, which houses a young woman by the name of Mary Wessel, who escaped the cult a few weeks gone by with her baby, uh, and has been kept there in the asylum since. And Dr. Balaguerin has been trying to speak to Wessel for some time, but has not been allowed to uh, because of the very fragile state uh, Mary Wessel is in. Uh, what would you like to do, folks, as you uh, start to approach uh, the coach? Or in fact, before you do decide, uh, as you approach the coach, you hear uh, Emily Bailey chase you out the front door uh, and say, excuse me, excuse me, uh, I'm very sorry, detective, doctor, um, uh, good. there is something I just remembered, which is that the reason uh, they said they wanted to get into the Mechanics Institute was to, to find some rare tomes, particularly... Uh, a book called, uh, goodness, I, it was called, uh, definitely not me forgetting what it was oh, called. Oh, David would be so question. unimpressed. Yeah, he'd be really <laughs> unimpressed with me right now. Because I just had this in uh, Omicron? Not Omicron, no. This is a real book, by the way. Uh, this does exist, and it is in the care of Federation University in Ballarat. This book, it was called something about the redemption of mankind. Uh... And can you all make an intelligence roll? Same as before, just get to beat your intelligence stat. Oh, gosh. That was terrible. Oh, wait, hang on. No, it wasn't so terrible. Are you saying I shouldn't have read the handout already? Mm -hmm. No, you can. Right. That was fine. That was fine. <laughs> uh, yes, that is a, a very basic oh. success. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that was, that was not a success. That's all right. Anybody who got at least a regular success, and you can share this with the party. Uh, you also remember reading some uh, some articles uh, discussing a book that the Ballarat Mechanics Institute uh, uh, has in their care. Uh, and the name of that book is Touching the Full Redemption of Mankind by the Death and Blood of Christ Jesus. The really disgusting and interesting part about this book is that it is bound in human skin. 
uh, which is an incredibly rare thing, but it does happen from time to time for different reasons. Um, but certainly the, the, the idea of, of the Stephenites being interested in some occult book that is bound in human skin uh, is quite interesting. So Emily Bailey does describe, she doesn't describe that it's bound in human skin, but she says the name and you recognize. Uh, For an extreme success, would there yes. be any additional information one might glean? Certainly. Uh, so from an extreme success, you know that this book was actually uh, originally printed in 1599. So it's a very old book. Uh, but you think it, it possibly has been uh, rebound since then. So the skin mm -hmm. that, that, that's bound is probably not uh, quite that old. Um, it's a small tome containing the work of a bishop, bishop Thomas Bilson. Uh, and... He articulated in his book that the metaphorical Calvinist interpretation of hell as an exclusion from God was accurate, uh, if that was, uh, then Christ's descent into hell after his crucifixion must refer to an actual existent hell as Christ was neither subject to sin nor able to be separated from the divine. Which is all, um, not really sure how to directly relate that to what's going on here, but it's a very intricate uh serious religious text and, and religious philosophical text of very new and interesting ideas the other thing you get with an extreme success um is that inside this book famously among people in the know is the inscription of mother not for mother of, of mother. mother okay and that that's all you can remember um so with that information um that's that's the last that Emily Bailey will share with you, unless you have further questions, and you can load up into the coach and decide where to go next. My questions uh, would probably be for uh, Clara and James, I guess. Isn't that the skin book? It is indeed, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've always had concerns about that book. Oh, I've always been intrigued by it. I mean, I'm intrigued, but also, that's not right. Um, I will also say, uh, Promethean, handout number five is a lovely image of that Indeed. book, if you'd like to it show that off. It is, in fact, already up on the stream. Outstanding. If you didn't know, viewers, um, I can't see the stream. I don't know what you're seeing. <laughs> I can see four lovely players uh, in front and of once me. Once again, if you would like to bully Shannon into creating a Twitch account, uh, feel free to do so. Yes, <laughs> I actually do have one, but I'll, we'll follow that up later. I just don't remember what it's called. Uh, but... Um, Yes, so what would you like to do? Where would you like to head as you have your conversation? Uh, the, the constable turns around and says, uh, Right, detective, where are we going? Well, I'm, I don't know about all of you, but I think I would like to get my hands on this book if it might give us some kind of leverage over this charlatan. Absolutely. At the very least, find out why they want these keys and whether or not they've been successful or if the keys have just disappeared, yes? Yes. Indeed. Very good. Um, so you head to the Ballarat Mechanics Institute, which is at the lower end of Sturt Street uh, in, in the centre of the city. It is a beautiful, uh, large building. Um, let me just see. 3738. I want to see I probably have a picture in the Mechanics Institute as a handout. I don't think we do. Um, no, we don't. So let's not worry about that. Uh, it is a beautiful building, though. I encourage all of you watching at home to Google the Ballarat Mechanics Institute. Uh, it's a very tall building in the main street of town, gothic in its architecture, and atop the building is a statue of the Roman goddess Minerva, uh, who's very the goddess cool of knowledge. Um, Mechanics Institute's famously used as libraries and places for professionals and tradesmen to share their knowledge and experience with each other. Almost like an early TAFE, uh, an affordable way for tradespeople to increase their skills um, without having to spend lots and lots and lots of money by means of their membership. So you pull up outside the Ballarat Mechanics Institute and you climb out of the coach. Interestingly, you find there is already uh, a few police officers there. There's already a police presence just outside the Ballarat Mechanics Institute. And a sergeant of the Ballarat police turns around and looks at you and looks especially at you, Detective Montague, and is clearly confused as to why you're here as you approach him. Constable? Uh, Sergeant, actually. Sergeant. Uh, My apologies. Detective Montague, isn't it? It certainly is. Yes. Um, what are you doing here? Well, Sergeant, I am investigating nefarious activities. 
and have reason to believe that thieves might have made their way into the Mechanics Institute to procure an unusual book. You have reason to believe that thieves might be coming here to procure an unusual book. There's absolutely no need to repeat my own statement to myself. I have well, my own notebook. Thank you. Detective. Sergeant. Uh, make a psychology roll as I'm speaking. Um, detective, I find it very interesting that you have reason to believe this, because I also have reason to believe this, because the book is missing and the Ballarat Mechanics Institute's already been broken into this evening. How'd your psychology Just work? a pass. Right. Just a pass. Just a pass is more than enough uh, for you to tell. This police officer is an old school Victorian uh, Ballarat police sergeant. He does not like you. He does not like that you are here teaching him and his colleagues how to do police work. They do not appreciate your modern British policing. And he's a little bit annoyed that you've come here about 20 minutes after he arrived to find out there was a book stolen to warn him that the book was going to be stolen. Excellent, old chap. You can gauge that from him quite clearly. Tell me, what kind of investigations have you pursued thus far? Myself and two constables have gone in there to have a look around. We found the book was missing. The glass case in which it was in has been smashed. There's no forced entry into the building itself, suggesting they must have had keys or perhaps been someone that worked here. The only other thing that we found, um, well, well, yes, that's it. The only thing we found was that they they must have unlocked a back door as they came in. Well, so no no smashed glass windows, only the glass case in which the book was kept. I can certainly save you some time on the nature of the keys. I'm almost certain that they would have been stolen from a Mr. William Bailey. William Bailey, indeed, the very same. <sighs> he looks over at one of the constables there, and he shares a look. And he looks back and he says, this isn't some continuation of that scuffle between him and Leamont, is it? Well, it very well could be, but I fail to yet see how Mr. Leamont would be at the bottom of all of this. Well, that's what Mr. Bailey's been sending letters and, and talking to the station for weeks, claiming that Leamont is sending fellas over to, to have a go at him. In fact, there was a couple of weeks ago... Um, you might remember, Detective, Bailey sent one of his men over to, to accost Mr. Learmont, which didn't end very well. But nevertheless... I do indeed, what do you and need, I'm sure detective? the tensions between the two are something to do with all of this, but again, I yet to, they, I've yet to see any evidence that links these tensions with the thievery, the theft even, of a esoteric skin-bound book of nonsense. Such. So. Who are you? He looks he's quite gross. Who are you? He, by rights, he should know who I am as a successful businessman running a gas printing company a and then also becoming quite a storied. Sure. Oh, um, he doesn't, not, not necessarily everybody reads the papers and follows the local news, uh, but I'll make a luck roll. And if he rolls less than 40, he knows who you are, which he did. He rolled a 37. So he's like, Wait, you're that uh, Curtis fellow, yeah? Yes, indeed, Sergeant. Uh, now, look, have you heard of these new light folks? What, those uh, new lighters? Yeah. The very we same. Yes. We have reason to believe that they have something to do with this, and they're after this book. What on earth would some poxy Christian fellow want with, with this book? I mean, he does talk about... Ah, uh, fanatics. What makes you think that he had something to do with this? Well, they were at the Bailey Mansion doing some he looks up at that. business with Mrs. Bailey and convincing her of apparitions. Apparitions. And uh, we we have reason to believe that they were only doing so in order to get and gain access to Mr. Bailey's keys. All right, well... Uh... The very same uh, okay. reasons yes. to believe, in fact. Now, if you don't mind, Sergeant, I would like to conduct my own investigation into the Mechanics Institute here. I'm sure you and your men are perfectly competent. Nonetheless, I would like to see the scene of the crime with my time, own eyes. If you want to waste your time going over covered ground, Detective, then you be my guest. And he just walks off. 
and uh, and he gestures to the constable by the door to let you pass through. So if you want to enter the Mechanics Institute, you may. Very good. Young chap, would you like to uh, conduct us to the scene of the crime, please? Uh, he looks up at you, and he does seem quite quite young, definitely a fresh constable. Um, and he goes, uh, yes, sir, certainly. And he shows you in. Uh, so you head through the foyer of the Mechanics Institute, and the, um, the book was kept in the basement level, so what is now where the library is. Um, there's the library underneath the Ballard Mechanics Institute today. So you head down the stairs into that basement level of the Mechanics Institute, and you can see uh, the, the lights have been lit up, so the, the, the lanterns have been lit up uh, to a dim light. Um, shadows being cast over the, the shelves of books and such. There is a case uh, sort of central towards one wall that has been shattered open. You can see shattered glass everywhere there. Um, and that's what you see as you enter. You, if you do a spot hidden, everybody, and let me know how you go. 43. Yep. Is it a success? Success. Uh, Regular success. Yes, it is a success. Did anybody get a hard success? Mm -mm. 77. That is a fail. Okay. How, how much lower do I need to go to get a hard success? Uh, it will be on a sheet. So a hard success is half your skill. Yep. Okay, yeah. And an extreme success is one-fifth your skill. Yeah, no, I need to go another 20 points, so I'm not going to burn that much luck. No, that's, that's okay. Luck. Um, so what you do find when you look around with a successful spot hidden roll from, from most of you um, is you actually find near that back door, uh, near near sort of backside door there, in a corner just sort of uh, hidden behind, almost, almost easy to miss, is a paper mache mask. Uh, and this, this paper mache mask, if you go over and pick it up, uh, if any of you would like to do that, um, you notice it has this hideous and intricate design uh, that has three eyes on it. So the regular eyes for the mask and then a third eye up here as well. Um, make it a cult. No, make a Cthulhu mythos roll. Anybody who has the Cthulhu mythos skill. No. Or you can also it. make an occult roll, but you are looking for an extreme success for an occult roll. I believe Ooh. Curtis has Cthulhu mythos. I do not. Um, you don't? You should. I have sure. zero, zero percent. Somebody has Cthulhu mythos. I would think that I, I would be an occultist. I have credit rating, if that's of any help, but I feel like it's probably uh, not going to be. Nobody has Cthulhu mythos. No, I, I am going to let you make a Cthulhu mythos roll anyway um, at a 5%. Anyone can do that. Just make a roll and let me know if you get less than 5. Okay. I'm going to burn 4 points to get mm -hmm. an extreme success in a cult. Whoa. Very good. Nice. So, Ms. Baldwin, as you yeah. study this mask and you think... To the, to the deepest recesses of your memory of, of tomes you've read while studying charlatanism and religious sort of uh, strange pagan religions and such that people often refer to. This mask reminds you of something and, you, and you, you're racking your brain. Yeah. You get the sound, yeah, yeah. You're not sure. But something very old, a very, very old thing. Not something you'd expect to be made out of a modern paper mache mask of any sort. We're talking like extremely obscure pagan religions, but you can't place it. Even with an extreme success, you can't place more than that, but you're getting something from that. Um, any other thoughts if you're looking around? Anywhere else within the Mechanics Institute you want to have a closer look at? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I hate you. I hate you all. I hate you all so much. I want to head to the basement, honestly. So you're in the basement now. Well, we are. That's where we yes, are. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's where you I are. I did. Now. I didn't pick up on that. Um, I is. I, I don't know when this was added. Is the stage was that built at this time? In the Minerva space. That's upstairs. If that's the one you're is talking it? about, the Minerva room. That's upstairs. I'm not, I'm not I think sure that if that's the one there. I'm thinking of. I know they, they would do have done a lot of lectures there. in the basement. I'm not really certain. Um, uh, the, the only area that was broken into is the area you're in now. So they, they came straight in here. There's nothing else that seems to have been damaged or, and the key that was stolen was specifically for this area. Mm. Um, okay. I feel like Montague would have so, done the rounds of the uh, the locals yes, and, and shared that information mm. with the gang. Certainly. 
Uh, so the only yeah, other yeah. thing you could really look at closer here is perhaps uh, out that that rear door that they broke that they sort of let themselves into. Perhaps there might be other clues on the way out there, but that's probably about it. Unless you guys have any other thoughts. Yeah, well, we can't say no to investigating the rear door. Dude, 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 breaking down that back door. All right. <laughs> um. Okay, go ahead and make a spot hidden by the rear entrance. Stop it. I have a good gander at the tradesman's entrance. Uh, that is a pass. 59. Lovely. You find uh, two cigarette butts uh, crushed out there. And if you would like to make a forensics roll or a, if anybody else a similar roll uh, with a bonus die. Chemistry? Chemistry is probably a bit of a stretch. I was um, thinking to see if it's the same type of mixed cigarette. That we I'll let you the... do it, but because chemistry is usually more specifically other chemicals, it'll have to be a hard success. Can I pull out one of the cigarettes that I grabbed from the same? Yep. And assist. So that's your you'll you'll get your bonus die from yeah. that. Yep. From being able to compare the two. Well, without the need of a bonus, so that's double O seven for Montague. Ooh. Outstanding, right, Mr. Bob. It's a success, but it's not Montague. A hard success. That's Thomas right. Um, Montague. So between you all, uh, looking at this, this does seem to be um the same tobacco and the same style of rolling uh as you found outside mr bailey's mansion perfect okay we seem to have our connection so either the stevenites took a little smoke break before scamming lady bailey or the staff are working with the Stephen. Oh, don't get too far ahead of yourself, Mr. Curtis. We have no evidence to suggest or proof even that any Stephenite was responsible for the pile of cigarette butts outside the Bailey's mansion at this time. Well, the Stephenites been... were asking for the keys, and we're finding the exact same cigarettes mm. here at the Indeed, scene. they're asking for keys. That is not evidence that they were smoking Does many it... cigarettes outside the mansion. But... Is there is indeed a link between one location and the other. But I think, Mr. Curtis, that you're falling into a fallacy. We are here to be deductive in nature, and I think you are being inductive in nature and making leaps that are not supported by evidence at this time. But perhaps we will find such evidence. It is certainly it is a possible. good theory. Should we perhaps make haste to the Bailey's rival in this matter? I think it could be worthwhile uh, talking to Mr. Learmonth, yes. Yep. So, um, as you are wrapping up your discussion, uh, the sergeant re-enters the room and comes down and still doesn't seem very happy with you. Um, you are a superior officer to him. He's not going to be overtly rude. Um, and he says, uh, right, are you are you finished up in here or what? Did you find anything? We already went over this place with a fine tooth comb. Our detective, so if you're quite finished. Indeed, but as I say, we have come from uh, Mr. Bailey's mansion where we did in fact find the same tobacco that we have found at the rear entrance of this very location. Please take these and store them in evidence if you don't mind and make sure that that is noted accordingly. Very well, he takes that and takes them for evidence. Uh, would you like to show him the mask that you found? The paper mache mask with the three uh, eyes? So I don't think Montague I, yeah, clocked the mask. So I shall yep. not. You're going to hang on to that one? Yes. Very good. All right. Um, would you like to do anything else at the Mechanics Institute or would you like to head back to the coach and go to a new location? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good to check out Mr. Learmont if everyone else is. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So as you return to the coach and you, you climb back in and you say to the constable driving the coach um, to head to the mansion of uh, Mr. Thomas Learmonth uh, so that you can either uh, tie him to this crime or rule him out as a person of interest, uh, either way or, and you climb on. Uh, would there be any conversation that you have as you approach Mr. Learmonth's mansion about the way that you want to, uh, to speak to him when you get there? Can the constable hear us? Um, he can, but he's with you. You can you can okay. generally trust him. I will pull out the mask and go. I also found this. Mm -hmm. um, a, a part of a phrase keeps coming to mind. Nya. I I can't extrapolate more than that. But um, if if 
you'll take a look. It's quite quite odd. I think you'll find. Mm. So you'll have a good look at this mask. Um, you already made some rolls earlier, so no one else can really get any further information out of it than this. Um, you don't need to make a sanity roll, but all of you, as you look at this mask and you're sitting in this enclosed space and you're trundling along, you know, is the, the sort of road bumping about, there is a sense of unease that comes from being in the presence of this mask that none of you can really quite nail down. You are approaching Mr. Learmont's mansion. You still have a moment to discuss plans unless you... Uh, want... Bella would like to quickly look at the mask. I can't deduce anything about its origin. Mm -hmm. But does it look like it was stored or regularly worn? Worn recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's, uh, there's almost... Uh, it's not warm or anything like that, but it's got that, you know, skin oil. You wouldn't need to roll for that. It's pretty noticeable on a paper mache mask if someone's face has been in it any time recently. Doctor, that thing is giving me the woofits. Feel free to throw it out of the carriage if you like. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs> the woofits. The woofits. Lovely. Um, now that we're like that, we're set and we have a, a little bit more time to look closely at it on the way, can I do an occult roll on this thing? You can, yes. Again, you'll need an extreme success to get anything further from it. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, still... yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Someone got it I will say oh, that yeah. uh, <laughs> because of what Clara did notice about it and what she said, you you actually also think that actually rings a bell, but that's the most you can get. It's that that does ring a bell, actually, what you've just said, um, but that's the most you'll get out of this. Uh, well, um, your coach has pulled up outside the mansion of Mr. Thomas Lemont and his family. Um, take it away. Mr. Montagu, I think if you were out here investigating previously, you could pretend this is a follow-up? Well, there's no need for pretense. Mr. Lemont is now a person of interest, simply establishing the facts, are we not? This is... I uh, handout number seven, by the way, Promethean, uh, is this homestead, if you'd like to throw that up when you have Four, a moment. So we can do... Uh, handout or map? Well, handout. Ha uh, handout number seven, uh, Urkeldoon Homestead, is what yeah, it's called. Gotcha. Uh, excellent. In which case, uh, yes, Detective Montague uh, will mm -hmm. approach the door of this residence and uh, give it a good old strong wrapping. Yep. And everybody's joined at the door? Mm -hmm. Lovely. So after a moment, uh, you hear stomping approaching the door, and the door opens, and there is a rather tall, broad, gruff-looking man uh, with a with a scruffy beard, um, about middle-aged, and he he doesn't look too happy to have been bothered so late at night. You folks have been at this for a while. We're we're well past ten in the evening. Uh, well, we're a bit past ten in the evening, I'll say. Um, so a bit late for a for a house call, and when he notices that there's a police officer there as well, he seems even more annoyed. He says, "Right." What is it this time? Mr. Learmont, Detective Montague. Uh, right, Detective. I'm You've already been here uh, quite a few times recently. Has, has Montague situation? himself actually been there? No, just the police in general. Uh, yeah. Surely yeah. do not know what you mean, sir. I'm investigating an entirely new matter that has arisen this very night. I, I'd like matter. to like lean in and smile a little bit and lean on my business connections here. Okay. That Learmont would probably know me through the business circles. Make a luck like... roll. Okay. 34. That's a success. Yeah, okay. So I will say that if you make a fast talk with him, you will get a bonus die because he does recognize you and your your connections. But cool. hold on, hold that under your hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, carry on. Were you saying something, Detective? Indeed. The recent altercations between Aye. yourself and one Mr. Bailey. Oh, weeping Bailey again. I'm sick of hearing about him. What is it about him this time? What, is he complaining again that I've sent some men there to bother him? What exactly is it that you're sick of, sir? I'm sick of him? I have not heard the end of Mr. Bailey since the issue with the mine. The, the Mount Edgerton mine where he fleeced me. Indeed. Yes. Right. Weeping Bailey, for those of you that seem not to know, is a braggart and a liar, right? But I'm not gonna, I'm not getting in there. I have better things to do with my time. 
Weeping Bailey was one of my most trusted agents in managing my mine. I asked him to look at the value of the proposed mine at Mount Edgerton. I had just purchased it, and the lying cad told me it was worthless, but he was able to get a gullible party to purchase it for a mere £10,000. I was relieved, because I, I was so relieved I offered him a cut of the sale for taking the, this worthless mine off my hands, and he wept with gratitude in my office. Weeping Bailey, indeed. He knew full well, and the whole time he knew full well that he was an anonymous purchaser, and, and the mine was worth millions. And not only that, but in a court case, when I tried to have him pulled up on this, he threatened one of my men, right? He threatened one of my men to testify in his favor. And my men are more loyal than that. And as I told one of your other detectives, Mr. Montague, my man's loyal. He's made of sterner stuff. And he grabbed that blackguard by the beard and the, and the sensitive area I won't describe in front of the ladies. And he threw him in the mud where he deserved to be. So you tell me, detective, I'm angry at this man, but I'm sick of hearing about him. What are you here for? Angry enough, perhaps, Mr. Limoth, to send one of these very loyal men to Mr. Bailey's mansion, perhaps, to lurk outside of said place and perhaps have been shot by Mr. Bailey. Make a uh, interpersonal skill roll of your Whoa. choice. While this is going on, can I please Certainly. check out Mr. Learmont's shoes? Certainly. Make a um, spot hidden roll. Yep. You can have a bonus die if you want to risk being seen having a look at his shoes. Mm, no, I don't want to show my cards just yet. Right. So just make a spot hidden roll. Um, okay. I'm going to burn two points of luck to make a success. His shoes are larger than the wax impression that you Thank have. Thank you. Yeah. Montague doesn't have a lot going for him in terms of interpersonal skills. Uh, what he yeah. does potentially <laughs> have uh, is law, however. Um, sure. And yeah. I have rolled a 10, which would be an extreme success. Sure. So law is usually um, that is a good stat for you. Usually used in a slightly different state, but since you got an extreme success, I'll pay that. Um, what do you want to do with that role? Uh, so with that, uh, Mr. Liam, I will remind you that the subject of ongoing investigations is very important that you are honest <sighs> with the authorities at all times. I'm sure I don't need you to remind you of that. Right. Uh, fair enough then detective I will be honest which is that I did once once sent a man of mine over to have words with Mr. Bailey that was some weeks ago and I have not done so since then all I have done since then is try to move past what has been a costly and embarrassing uh, sequence of events in which I've been through where Mr. Bailey has robbed me of, of the equivalent of thousands of pounds worth of gold and has defeated me in, in a truly spectacular fashion uh, in a court case where I tried to seek justice and unfortunately I failed. If you are after uh, someone to look into about this, Perhaps you should be looking closer into the kind of unscrupulous friends that Mr. Bailey keeps himself in contact with. Oh, what sort of friends? Well, the, the consortium with which he works to purchase the mine, for example, uh, I'm certain he's got involvement with some kind of organized crime here in Ballarat. <gasps> um, well, he must, if he's getting involved in such things. Make a psychology roll, anyone who's interested. <laughs> hell yes. Oh, hell yes. Yeah, nice. Uh, that is a... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, let's do it. I'm burning three points for an extreme success. Lovely. Um, with an extreme success, he's not entirely lying, uh, but he is deflecting. Learmonth mm -hmm. has just as much connection to the shady side of Ballarat as Bailey does. Mm -hmm. um, they are both very wealthy businessmen. 
in a very wealthy town and you can take from that what you like uh <laughs> but he is generally with it especially with instruments he's generally being honest he has nothing to do with this he's sick of hearing about it mm -hmm. and um and mostly he's just angry at mr bailey because he stole his mind and then starts gallivanting around town like he's earned this wealth um that actually he stole mm -hmm. uh, and then he even says he's like, and, and this uh william bailey he he throws all of what is rightfully my money at the local hospital and sets himself up as some kind of philanthropist it's disgraceful if you want to come and bother someone in the middle of the night go and bother him mm. um hospital you say yeah yeah exactly i like i, I want to lean in and just sort of yeah, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge to to Learmonth and be just like, so look, Learmonth, the good the good detective here is, and I'm just I want to kind of just smile, like, go with me on this at mm -hmm. Montague. Uh, it's just like the the good detective here is here to help me out as well uh, as the uh, you know Mister Bailey has some concerns about. Whether somebody is playing tricks on him, Mrs. Bailey has concerns of hauntings or harassment <laughs> by the Stevens. Make the your... Stevenites. Stevenites? Yes, the You're Stevenites. You're saying that Emily Bailey's got herself caught up with John Stevens. We... <laughs> well... <laughs> he laughs heartily at least. He finds this very entertaining. Do you make your interpersonal role uh, uh, with what you're doing? And remember, you, you have a, a bonus fast die. talk, right? Fast talk will do it. Uh, uh, and, so, and, and you get a bonus die. So you roll yes, your tens now twice. that's just the the ten, not the doubles. Right? Just the so the um, yeah, the ten. So the the one that has two digits. And on what's it. The one a, that says sixty seventy? You re-roll that one. What's an extreme success for me on this? Uh, for fast talk, uh, let me just check your sheet here. There My fast talk, sheets. I don't actually have. You don't have. You can also use. Oh, you don't have much, do you? Because you don't have. You can use charm, which is fifteen percent, but okay. it'll be difficult for you to get it. But remember, you do get to re-roll uh, that doubles. Yeah. So it's oh, so it's the the zero zero one that I rolled. Yes. Yeah, so you roll the zero zero one twice. Okay. Um. Yeah, because I'm I'm leaning here on the fact that I am well known within the business community, and yep. like I've got all those connections within the fin mm. financial and political circles, that Learmonth is going to have a little bit of a listen to me, yep. and, and that he's going to find Bailey's situation mm. kind of mm. bemusing at the least, and be more inclined to maybe yes. help us get a bit of info. Yeah, where'd it go? Doesn't count. Floor is lava. <laughs> <laughs> Even know where it went. Uh -oh. Sean Sunday was never seen again. <laughs> Save as a <laughs> wisping trail of smoke. It, it, it would have got to taken it. Found it. We're back. How'd you go? Let's try again. Um, okay, my first one was better. Yep. What do I need to get for a hard success minimum? Um, Hard success uh, for this one, uh, 15, it would have to be like less than five. Okay. So less than three or four, even at 15%. Oof. You don't need a hard success though. This is, you just need a normal success. What I did got you 22. Roll? So 15 is your charm skill. So you would either need to push the roll, which I would let you roll at advantage again, uh, or you can spend, what's that, seven points of luck? Yeah. You know, I'm going to spend the luck. Spend Do the luck. It. I like Wait. I I don't think I'm gonna need that many more of these old luck points, honestly, like to save them. So let's go ahead and use them. Have you played Call of Cthulhu before? <laughs> I mean it's a one shot. I'm not keeping well, them. I'm trying to get us to our end. <laughs> Look, I'm pretty sure. You tend we're to re-roll luck at the start this. of every uh, yeah. at the start of every module, you re-roll your luck stat. So you can if you're playing Call of Cthulhu and you're doing a one shot or an ongoing, you can use your luck. It resets, um, yeah. not every play session, but every adventure. Yeah. Um, so that's okay, great. So with that success, he does laugh heartily at the idea of uh, William Bailey's wife being sucked into this nonsense. He thinks that's very amusing. And as part of that amusement, he could have either 
thought that was so funny that it just made his night. He was like, ah, get out of here. I want to go to bed. But uh, he's glad that you've brought this to his attention. He's like, so Emily Bailey is caught up with the Stephen Newlighters then. That's that's fantastic. You've made my night, Mr. Curtis. Just one one last thing, Liam Month, old chap. Um, You know the weird book? The weird? You'll have to be a bit more specific. The skin book. Oh, that um, redemption nonsense. Yes, it's been nicked. It's been nicked? It's been nicked. Really? Right under William Bailey's nose. (laughs) Oh, 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 that that man will have quite a bit of doing to get out under this reputation. (laughs) Do you know who might want to nick it? Well, you mentioned them Stevenite lighters, possibly them. I mean, they're always interested in who knows what. They're they're growing. They're growing. They're not what ten minute, ten minute drive up the road this way, really. There's quite a lot of them. There's gonna be forty, fifty of them there now. But that's that you mentioned them, sir. So maybe them. But your guess is as good as mine. I've I got nothing left. Right. Uh, well, I will say, um, from your roles, folks, you can all be pretty confident that uh, Mr. Leamont is telling the truth, at least mostly. Um, and that you can probably safely uh, write him off as a person of interest in this case. Uh, always good to be thorough, though, and make sure there's no other connection. Um, so would you like to check anything else in with her? Uh, did Clara yes. uh, get a chance to follow up on the shoe situation? I don't recall. Thomas Leamont's shoes are missing. larger. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Lovely. Where would you folks like to go next? As you thank uh, Thomas Nemoth for his night, and he says, "Thank you very much for waking me up after all, because that—that that is, I'm going to be having happy <laughs> the Stevenites bang." And as he closes the door, uh, chuckling over his shoulder, an, and leaves you on his landing by yourself. An unsavory man. Uh, yeah, I just—I just can't get over the image of. Cthulhu emerging from a rift under Lake Windory. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah, it's it tracks. Would, would Clara be familiar with any of the rumors of the the Stevenites? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, as yeah. I said, there's those articles that I sent uh, yeah, in, that we sent yeah. through at the start. Yeah. Which, uh, for anyone watching at home that wants to play this, uh, those articles are more for player information. Uh, they don't always need to be said out loud. I'm happy to read another one of them out, though, if you just want a bit more information. Now. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Ones. Just, I wasn't sure how much Clara would be aware of it. Cla- Clara is aware, as aware as anyone who's been up yeah. with local news. She, uh, Clara will move um, alongside Mr. Curtis mm-hmm. and say, should you wish to ensure that the females of our party uh, do not find you more distasteful with your incredulous beliefs than they currently do. I would suggest that you don't implicate members of the fairer sex with that group of people. But she was the one they were talking to. Yes, but considering he, there's just been a trial where he slept with someone's wife... And he's just kissed. kissed was what was in that. Yes, just kissed was what was in that news uh, paper article. Kissed, but yes, <laughs> in her bedroom. And you've just gone and told someone outside of their relationship, outside of the marriage bed of the Baileys. Yes, Mrs. Bailey is wrapped up in that group of people. You've well, now automatically started a whole scarlet letter rumor. The good doctor and I, we don't care about gentlemen and their opinions quite so much as other ladies do. Mm -hmm. And a lady's position is still quite precarious, I'll have you know. It is. But, and hear me out on this one, if it becomes public knowledge that the Stevenites are hassling, and I did specifically indicate that they were hassling poor Madam Stevens, I feel Uh. like she's going to be safer from them because the public eye will be on the Baileys. No, well, judging by Mr. Learmont's reaction, I don't think he thinks it's a terrible oversight on the Stevenites' part. And I think he, 
Well, he specifically said that she was involved with them and you did not dispute that. That sounds like there is some form of consensual engagement with them. That was 100% just my ADHD not paying attention to what he was saying. <laughs> no, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here as, as the keeper and say this is actually a, a really wonderful conversation for a couple of reasons. First of all, because it's a really important thing to consider and talk about uh, as part of this, this, this background. Second of all, because Curtis as a character and as a man of this time would not have considered that in the same way that the women have. Yes. Um, <laughs> no one would have wanted you, but he didn't get busted. <laughs> well, uh, but that's, and that's just it. Um, yeah, great. Uh, but I, I, I will, I will impart. Yeah. I was trying to insinuate mm. that the Stevenites were harassing. Oh, okay. look, I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. No, Clara, just just in case it's dickhead. like that, like in in world as well. Yes. That, yeah. No. Like, I, I, that's I what I was getting that. at. I think the the thing to consider as as a meta knowledge thing here. Um, Yes, and that, that can come across in general. Learmonth hates the Baileys. He does not need an excuse to hate them more or to think less of them. Um, but uh, because of the way you worded it, it would have been harder for him to actually honestly implicate her in such a horrible way. Um, but but the ladies make a, make a salient point. Uh, they do. Yeah, as, as we go. So that's, a, I suppose, a conversation that can be had uh, in the coach on the way to your final location. And I think we'll, we'll wrap up this Speaking evening. Speaking of mad women, perhaps we should visit the hospital and check in on this. That's... Sterling segue. And check in on yes. this woman and, uh, and the relationship between Mr. Bailey and, and the asylum. Outstanding. Um... If we are going to the asylum as our next place, given I have not been able to get access to her and she's currently not implicated in anything further, mm -hmm. let me make contact with someone I know who works in the medical profession that could possibly get us okay, access. So um, you would have to go to that person's home, essentially, because you can't call them. Uh, your best bet, and you'd know this is someone who's been trying to get in, is yes, you haven't been able to get access. You've never gone there with a police officer. Oh, that's true. Um, uh, the other thing is the doctor that would be there would be there somewhere at the hospital, the doctor that would actually be able to let you in. Um, and and again, if, if, if Dr. Guerin had a contact that could have gotten her in, she would have already she would used, have used them. It, yeah. She would have already used them. But it's a very good point, uh, and you will have to consider that. You're not just going to be let in. Um, and you you would know this as a doctor, and you, detective, would know this as a, as a police officer. Police don't have a lot of pull in hospitals. The the doctors are in charge in the hospitals. The police do what the doctors tell them to do, uh, and that's very that's very firmly held in in the emergency services. Um, but as long as you're polite and you and you play yourself well, you should be able to get in and have a look around. You would hope. Is it my or? Bella's main concern would be if she wasn't allowed in because the person's fragile, then a police officer interrogating would be even worse. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and, and that's, that's something what the, you have to convince. That's what the guns are for. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. maybe we can come up with a, I'm here to, like, you need to question her. She's very fragile. I'm here to kind of provide, for want of a better term, softer questioning that still achieves make sure that i am appropriately guided in my questioning of this fragile creature i i have a potential other way of ensuring that you are not uh removed or uh you are allowed to transverse this hospital as you might require i could always go in and say that i wish to um assess the hospital for a large bequeathment and that I should like the head doctor to give me a tour of the hospital at approximately uh, half past ten in the evening precisely if you like I um, am yeah. uh, one of the stage performers types we are um, eclectic to say the least I 
Tammy, as a player, thought you were going to suggest turning up and saying you felt hysterical and needed to be admitted. That's that was, that thought, was, that was plan D. I, I was going to put everything else ahead of that. <laughs> I'm going to jump aside uh, here to this part of the conversation and say that actually happened a bit uh, here in Victoria, especially at the Arrowdale Lunatic Asylum in Ararat. And there were women who had themselves deliberately committed so that they could investigate uh, claims of abuse in the asylum. Mm. And what happened was they got stuck there because the staff, I don't know if they knew something was off or whatever it was, they went, oh, you're crazy. Okay, well, you're stuck here and you're crazy. And then I'm saying this is the thing. Um, and then when when she was done and she'd done her investigating, she wanted to leave, they wouldn't let her out for months yeah. and she was abused and it was really very horrible. There is a Tales from Red City episode on that, but that's enough plugging. Excellent. Me. Mr. Curtis, um, I think I also yes. have an excellent plan. Mr. Curtis, you should claim to have lost your senses and we will get you that way as an option. These are all very good plans. I'm sure that in order of magnitude of realistic expectation of success, we should try them all. Uh, but for tonight, in terms of the stream, I do believe yes. we're going to leave we it there. I think I we just will want to hand there, him a folks. bunch of money. I mean, obviously, I'm a wealthy businessman. <laughs> I will. Um, I will wrap up by saying you've had this conversation in your coach. Uh, you have now pulled up outside uh, the hospital building, uh, which is uh, where they have their their psychiatric ward, um, if you like. Um, it's not quite as old gothic building as some of the ones you've seen but it is still that beautiful old Victorian era uh, building. Uh, not a lot of lights on, you think, as you approach. Um, and yes, that, that's it. That's where we will leave it now. Thank you very much, guys. Have a lot of fun with this. We're about, uh, I think, just over halfway through the content of this module, depending, of course, on uh, how you continue to play this one. Um, on the module, if anyone's watching out there, this is Mr. Bailey's Haunted Mansion. Uh, written and set locally here in Ballarat. It is available on the Miskatonic repository, as is um, uh, another uh, piece that was written by the same by the same writers, Mr. David Waldron, Dr. David Waldron, I should say, in fact. Oh, uh, it's just written and released uh, The Last Dance of Lola Montez, which is a modern Ballarat set RPG Ooh. and definitely worth going and checking out. Thanks heaps to the players. Thanks heaps to everyone watching, and I'll turn it over to Promethean to... Do we hey, Shannon, up? that was a really good plug. I reckon you should get yourself a Twitch handle and we should probably get you back more often than just for okay. these sessions. I do. <laughs> I do have a Twitch handle and I found it, but I reckon I'm going to change it before I start using it for anything because it's a bit literally just my name. Magnificent. So. <laughs> um, also, I will throw out one last reminder. So uh, we have a competition uh, running currently, exclamation mark, enter. Uh, for a giveaway from Ark and Forge as well. Uh, you will have from now until the mere moments before we wrap for good here uh, to, to jump in on that before we run it. So that will be wonderful. Um, first and foremost, I would like to throw a non-shady uh, thanks to Shadow for jumping and running the session. It has been super fun so far. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heaps. Um, thanks for having it's, me. It's been a good time. And yeah, we're going to need you to come back to uh, to wrap this shit up if uh yeah, that's too. okay um yeah and if you ever got a game and you need a player and i've got the time let me know it's uh Don't go get in there ahead of jesus yourself jesus that's your run well, again there was an if there was an wow. if wow oh, so cool. if you don't play nicely i will turn this coach around and we will go home. so pushy <laughs> that's it back to chris <laughs> um all right let's go around the table and we will do some uh beautiful outros once again uh explaining for the benefit of those who may be watching who we are what we do where we can find your very cool and awesome self uh when you're not here uh at my request doing this shit instead um let's go in reverse order i guess um hi i'm promethean this is zero in it i play games on the internet a bunch uh i'm running my first td campaign here on the law Ride channel check out all the socials and stuff where the next session of that's running it's fun as hell uh you'll also find me playing games regularly on meeples and dragons uh and it's fate's grip twitch channels also tolera 79 I do not stream on my own channel at all. I pop up and guest on other people's channels, but I also play in uh, one on Fate's Grip uh, with Mr. Professional Methian. Indeed. Uh, Sean, a Sunday, if you don't mind. 
Hello. Yes, once again, I am your local community manager for Arkin Forge Tabletop, and we are a map making and interactive tabletop software company here in Melbourne. Uh, we will be at Conquest next weekend, so come and see us at Conquest to get a little preview, especially of something that we're pre-launching for the Gaslands crew, which I am very, very excited about. I have been working on this for a while. Uh, so come and see us and make friends. And uh, yeah, if you would like to check out Ark and Forge for yourself, especially those of you that write adventures, we want to talk to you. Head to www.tarkenforge.com. Whoa, oh, bam! Oh, Jesus Christ. Nicely done. Mm. Well done. Nicely and done. And we'll see you there. Awesome. I've seen some of that Gaslands uh, stuff also, and it mm. will, yeah, 100% wait check till, it out. Wait till you see what this is, Pro. You haven't seen any of this. I haven't even seen it yet. I've just been told what it is. Okay, that's I'm cool. so hyped. Brilliant. Uh, and Nephthys Nile. If you don't mind. Hi, I'm Nessus Nile. Uh, when I'm not here, being an utter force of chaos, uh, you can find me at the following places. Dungeons and Dragons Australia. We are Australia's largest D&D fan group uh, with over, oh, I want to say 12,000 members. You should totally join us. We're awesome. Uh, uh, you will find me in Red Centre by Night. We are currently recording our finales. Mm. They should be showing later on in this year. You can find me soon on Icon Inc. here on Twitch. We will be doing some cool stuff. They're currently running their uh, Anarch Cyberpunk Vampire the Masquerade mix-up, mash-up, utter freaking chaos. It is an amazing story. Brilliant players. Go watch them. I will be there soon. Uh, I'm also on Meeples and Dragons with Fallout. Uh, it fell out back uh, in the Fallout universe TTRPG space. Again, out of chaos. There's like a theme here or something. I will also be at Conquest. I will be running Vampire the Masquerade, Blood of My Blood. I believe I'm fully booked, but if you see me, point at me, yell, throw things at my head and say, hey, it's you, and I will go... Uh, um... I think that's everywhere I am, but you can find me everywhere on my name and I talk ad nauseum about all the shenanigans I'm doing. Awesome. Amazing. That is like seriously a lot of shenanigans. I thought that I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, was I, I, I was thought like, that I was everywhere, but you were, you were truly <laughs> everywhere. I'm everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I am I, an entity I can, on the internet, folks. <laughs> I can think of one thing she forgot too. Oh, what did I forget? ARC. Oh, yeah, I'm... Oh, oh whoops. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you like roleplay uh, stuff, especially like roleplay games, uh, the Australian roleplay community, uh, we support indie, local, Australian, independent TTRPG um, writers and runners and everything like that. Check us out on the interwebs. Yeah, magnificent. Um, all right. Thanks, Tal. <laughs> um, I, Checks I, in I, the I'm mail. Just gonna, I'm just going to jump on and, and say that because I was getting all these messages from people saying, why don't you have a Twitch handle? I've updated my Twitch Woo! handle. I have one Woo! now. It doesn't mean anything. I don't do anything there, but I'm there. It is Squid Ink Soup 1995. Magnificent. Hooray! That's another thing. Uh, so you can find me there. I don't do anything. Uh, but if you want to see more Yet. of my work, follow Tales from Rat City on all over the internet. We've got podcasts, we do events, we're doing stuff for Heritage Festival later this year. If you're in Ballarat, or if you want to watch this online, look, search Tales from Rat City on the socials. You'll find us. That's the best way to get information. Do I could say a bunch of stuff at you, but you'll all forget it all anyway. And I'll drop a link in on the next bit, yeah. and you can check that out. Um, send the link in Discord so that I do the right one please <laughs> that would be wonderful all right here's how this is going to work i'm going to switch this over to a little thanks for watching pre-raid screen um are you doing the final correct during that thanks for watching pre-raid screen i will uh close the giveaway and the winner will be announced in chat so don't bail out Woo! just yet while all of that is happening i'll also go find a raid target to raid out to <laughs> <laughs> for the winner just email sean at arkenforge.com excellent um yes and or Join the Lawrence Discord and chat with us there. That's absolutely fine mm. as well. We can figure all that out. We 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 yes, have we a can. record of who has won the things. Um, in fact, you know what? Let's do that right now. Um, so drum roll, yes, please. absolutely. Drum roll. <laughs> My personal preference for doing this would be to do it as a big spinny wheel. Um, uh, I set it up very quickly, so it's it's being done through stream elements instead. Uh, th that to me looks like David Waldron at a guess has won uh, the Ark and Forge code. Amazing, excellent. excellent. So done. 
that's done i'm going to switch this over thank you for watching we appreciate it we appreciate you um hope you've had a fun time uh watching us do silly things and stay tuned to the social side of the internet i guess after i've convinced all of these people to gather together in the same place at the same time again uh for the next bit um stick around we'll find someone called a raid so thank you legends lovely we thank you very you. much everyone thanks